Video and no sound. What the hell happened? Don't tell me I broke you right at the very beginning. <laughs> there we go. I broke you right at the very beginning. <laughs> I know that something new flashed across. Hey, I'm sharing the video to make it more interesting if we started so it wouldn't be just no. us talking shit. Oh, I'll tell you what, folks, it's 4 o'clock. Before we go any farther, you've gone too long without a theme song. It's time. Share it here. In a time of little joy, two guys from Illinois. That's me, and Phil. In their own hands, and sent the show out to the land. Where's Tom Harmon at? Not gonna get in here. Hey, Tom Harmon, where you at, buddy? You're going to Think about it and grab a beer. Come on and watch the Phil and John Show. Phil and John Show. They're showing up and there's nowhere to go. Well, Phil and John Show. Phil and John Show. They're playing, that, playing so hot that it's melting the snow. Yeah, Phil and John Show. Phil and John Show. Don't know where this will go. Phil and John Show. up on me Friday September 17th 2021 week 72 Phil 72 oh, weeks behind the computer love it. I hate this zoom shit I know no you're not kidding Jim yeah I'm over it dude I'm so over it but but and that's a big but but um and we're gonna, don't say it don't say it we're gonna be doing this we're gonna you know fall's <laughs> coming in winter and we're gonna be after yep. again everybody back to back to square one again so we might as well just talk yeah we're gonna have new segments we're um, gonna have um like tonight we're gonna have i i do believe live painting by john and me we're gonna paint live tonight we'll see what happens yeah i think we'll see what happens. Cool. stick around and watch what happens we're, we're in a punk mood uh phil's got a punk show this weekend and i'm really proud of him for doing punk rock stuff uh, that's our roots who uh, well, it's my roots. Uh, you're, you had punk rock along the way, I think, but punk rock is definitely my roots music. I mean, I'm older than you. I get, I get more. Yeah, you were probably there whenever the other '70s. No, you know, but the, you, you, your uh, knowledge of uh, stuff that, yeah, you, yeah, you, okay. Anyway, yes, I'm a big punk rocker from the uh, late '77, '78, '79, '80, '81, <laughs> lot of English stuff. I got in trouble last week in for Chicago. Chicago. I got in trouble a couple weeks ago for sharing on the Billy Strings page. They took it off, so I went and shared it again there just for the hell of it. <laughs> I don't know if you're out there. Uh, what's that? What, what happened? Billy said something. No, I, they, they just someone. They took took it down after a few days. They left it up there for a few days and they took it down, which is fine. I don't expect them to leave it up there all week, you know. But they put it up there for a few weeks. I was just um. That's right. Trying to spread the word. I talked to Kyle Tuttle this last week. Um, he's interested in doing the show pretty soon, but he said Fridays aren't good for him. We picked an odd day to have a party with the musicians now that they're all on tour again. Yeah, that is uh, that is strange. Uh, hey, you're the one who picked it, man. You know, I mean, you could have picked any time, but you picked <sighs> Friday at 4 o'clock. But, you know, um, well, when we picked like, it, 80, 83,000 months ago, I said, okay. Yes. When, when we picked it, okay, um, there was no... There was nowhere to go. <laughs> man, Ride Fest was in Chicago. This you go? Weekend. Did you go to Ride Fest? Oh, I had a free ticket for my friend. Oh, you were at Wilco with me. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I would have blew it off for Ride Fest. 
I probably would have too, honestly. Except well, for hell yeah, if I had two tickets, yeah, we would have been. Except gone. for um, a Cody was really great. I, I would have known how to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, hey, Brian Flick, what's up, buddy? Right. Brian Flick's cheering it, cheers it in. Hey, Brian. This week's theme is going to be punk rock show. Punk rock. And, uh, punk rock show and letting it go because it's time to let it go, folks. You're holding on to something from your past and it's bothering you. It's holding you back and you're escaping reality in any way whatsoever. Let it go. That's uh, sponsored by the infamous String Dusters. Uh, they, they got me excited about a song this week. and I, It was exactly what I needed to hear. You know, sometimes you have to just let go of things that you can't change. And Are you going to do anything crazy, are you, Jim? Uh, maybe paying a chicken. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, yeah, I got 40 minutes of royalty free punk rock music that we can use. All right. <clears throat> After Shoe Fest, yeah. uh, I was not feeling good. Yeah, I worked I think I myself very done. thin. Uh, the five days out there was a blast. We worked really hard. We don't think about it so much how many hours we work in a row. But damn, if we didn't work all day, every day we were out there. Call it work, call it what you will. I mean, we definitely stay standing up the whole time. All right. No complaints, but uh, no. um, the uh, animals were um, work, um, get up early and talking. I mean, it. would I um, trade it? No. Anyway. No, I'll never trade Shoe Fest for anything. That's, gonna be, that's a pretty incredible weekend. We can't. might go back to the old spot. We will go Any, back to the old spot. I actually have to go to Shoe Fest. So in Springfield, I'm, I'm set in Springfield on Sunday. We went to Wilco on Saturday. Then I went to Springfield on Sunday and did a small show, a Jerry show. Yeah, I and, saw that. I had three people come up to me and ask me where, why I wasn't at Shoe Fest. So people didn't, people didn't, we were that, we were just that far removed from our other spot that people just didn't see us at all all weekend. Isn't that weird? It's strange. Three people come up to me and a guy came up to me and he had his bracelet on still and he said he didn't get a poster because he didn't see me all weekend. So I mean, I mean, that's a good festival when we don't see, when we don't see people, you know. But the fact that they didn't find our booth, yeah, we'll move back next year. No big deal. No big deal. I had a blast. We did fine. You know, it was a good weekend. So good that I basically took two weeks off from working because I was so fucking tired. <laughs> and, and you know, I, I let myself get in a spot this week. It just wasn't worth holding on to. I let it go. We're, we're going to let it go tonight. It's all about letting go. Um, don't hold on to that shit, folks. It's not worth um, it. If yeah, you um, reach out to a friend and tell a friend, I'm just saying, let it go. Yeah. Sorry, recurring thing tonight, Phil. I'm feeling good, okay? I'm feeling good tonight. I spent today with one of my best friends from my childhood. And he, we, we, he, he was, I, this morning I was feeling kind of out of it and I got online. The first post I saw was him feeling kind of out of it. So I called him up and said, what are you doing today? And he didn't do nothing today. He needed to ride to the drugstore. So I went and grabbed his ass and took him to the drugstore and we had sandwiches and we hung out. And I hadn't seen the guy for so long. It felt so good. And we just thought we let stuff out of our systems onto each other. And we both felt better at the end of it. Friends are what friends are for folks. Would That's you have a Big Mac? No, I had a double. No, I had a grilled cheese sandwich. I made a home. Okay. Yep, with Velveeta cheese. And then I made dinner with Velveeta cheese, so oh, it's not, you know, I'm going to be fully stuffed. We're talking up. about food during the show, man. I just made a bunch of, okay, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to do a live. All right, I turned an old cabinet or old painting that was broken. It's it's mad and everything. And I spray painted it. Uh, everything. Uh, piece of uh, plexiglass goes over it. It's all orange and psychedelic. It's very hard to see on the, the screen. So what I'm going to do, it's for uh, an event I have coming up. I'm going to do um, lettering of punk bands. So uh, anybody got a punk band? Uh, I'm going to paint it real fast, every so often. We're going to paint while we're working tonight. We're going to try to keep busy right. while we're working right. on the process. I'm a, at, uh, I'm a bit at speaking and lettering. But I, I th okay. But I'm going to do the first one. I'll go from there. And I'll but, uh, Let me guess. The first punk band you're going to pick starts with a C. No, it does not. Because there's a the before that. Uh, oh. The Clash. The Clash. All right, all right. I get it. I get you it. have to be correct. Got to be precise in this, in this mode. Yeah, so even the cat's tail said, yeah, you better be right. You don't say the fish. Okay. Did you go see the Wilco last week? No, it was Wilco. <laughs> Sorry we left early. We were we were just we were worn out. I had a I big understand. day. Um, we, we were really, we were so pumped up. I'm going to, I'm going to say this right now. We were so pumped up at Cody's show and Backyard Tire Fire. Uh, Wilco kind of left right. us. Wilco. Oh, yeah. Scooby. And Phoebe. Wilco left us kind of in a daze and we left early. We were kind of, we, we just wasn't feeding us. It wasn't feeding us our soul. 
so we left early, but they were doing great. Shit, they're fucking awesome. I mean, I, that one song where they play all the fucking noise in the background, he sings the melody over the top. That's pretty, pretty wacky. So we left early. I feel bad, but it was a good show. It went till what, eleven o'clock or so. Um, yeah. Yeah. We um we had a blast though. We had a good time. We saw a lot of friends out there, and I, I heard some good advice from people. Scooby's tail looks a little different. Yeah, Tom Harmon. No way. Tom, if I send you the link, will you come on the show with us and do five records, buddy? Please. Ten thirty is when the show ended. Ryan said. That's right. the I did the, okay. I did the clash. That makes okay. sense for the streets. I'm gonna say my my addition to it before we start asking for everybody else's addition is gonna be the Ramones. So another the band, but the okay. Ramones. Okay. Because that is my right. that's my ultimate I, punk. I, I, I probably get should about thirty up in here. So okay. we'll go through. The we'll show. start there, and we're asking people. Yeah, we can to, keep talking. I can do that. I can chew bubble gum. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. If you know of a punk band, I'll start after I, records and after 420. Yeah, um, um, yeah. I mean, early yeah. English. Um, don't give me Green Day. I don't think they're. That's too early for me, or too late for me. Go early and deep. Well, would and you if, consider if, Green if, Day? If, like if, if if you happen to say suicidal, I can't spell that. Or tendencies, I can't spell that either. So you have to spell it for me. Just a hint, hint. But I can spell dead Kennedys. All right. All right. Well, that's a, the word Kennedys is kind of tricky. Uh, damn it! Don't do that. Because is it dead Kennedys possessive? No, or dead I know. Plural. Um, is there E and N? I didn't go that far. I, I don't even know if it's dead Kennedys with an E Y S. I thought it was E Y S, but now I'm thinking it's E. It should be I E S. Man, Tommy Harmon's alive. The dead Kennedys is spelled D E A D K E N N E D Y S. Yeah, Tom Harmon is alive. Okay. Um, I'm sending the link. Because we would love to have you come in, Tom, and, and people would love to see you, Tom. You don't have to brush your hair or nothing. Um, just come on in and do five records with us here in a few minutes, buddy. That would be really amazing. It would be, it'd be good for I just call Ramones. R Ram Ones. Ram Ones. I don't have the soundtrack up yet for our show yet. I'm, I'm busy over here. All right. To... Um, Go on. Okay. That's it. I mean, I, you don't. So throughout the show tonight, if you want to give a punk rock band or suggest a punk rock band, we'll take that suggestion and we'll put it onto the artwork that Phil's working on. Yeah, I'm doing a set of records. I do these things. I did a Halloween theme a couple of years ago, old 45s and old um, band um, musicians that have died with their name on it and their date birth, you know, from Lou Reed to my uh, one of my favorites, Phil Lynott from Thin Lizzy to... Uh, Freddie Mercury to Karen Carpenter. I mean, these are my uh, Lane Staley, you know. Interesting choice of words, Karen Carpenter. Bob Marley. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, Karen Carpenter, that's sad. I actually picked one of my records as the Carpenters. Oh, spoiler alert. And I'm running out of records to show, folks. I've got to go record shopping pretty soon. I've got to find my way back to the record store. And get back to get back to business with my records because I kind of let the, the, the collection slip, and I've been been listening to them, but now there's stuff stacked on top of the record player again. Uh, all my shoe fast posters are stacked on top of the record player. <sighs> what kind of hat is that, John? It's a it's a hat that my brother left behind when he passed away. I wow. okay, I'm sorry. So I, no, okay. I, I barely said that, and you can hear me. That is very sensitive. Um, you you sound really good. I, I've got my volume turned up real loud. Why can't you do it, Tom Harmon? You give me a fucking excuse, buddy. Tell me you can't do it. Says can't do it. Give me a fucking excuse, Tom. We would love. Tom, let me just say this real. Let me, let me have a word on PSA for just one second. You can't Tom. do that. You can't do that now. You know you can. I'm gonna. You just gotta go to his house and um, put him on a stretch table and just literally. Uh, you know, Stretch him. Can't, yeah, pretty much. And he probably probably tall. And go, I like it. So. Everybody miss you, Tom. Everybody asks what you were up to. Everybody, everybody asks everywhere I've been, Tom. Where, where Not everybody. Well, some people don't fucking know him, dude. But everybody who knows him was like, "Where's Tom Harmon? How's he been?" And we Beavis said, does, butthead doesn't. Just say it, Tom Harmon. I want an excuse. Okay, I want an excuse right. right now in writing. Okay, so the next, the next band. Oh, hmm. the Minutemen. Is it the Minutemen? Um, I think it's just Minutemen. All right. M I N U T E Minute Men. That is a great band. That's something Brian Flick just recently, recently. Um, that is uh, my brother is uh, one of his favorite. Okay, S -s -s spell it again. I M I N U T E. 
M I N. Okay, minute. Okay. And then men, M E N, one word. Uh, I'm being a doof. Okay. Yeah, minute it's men. It's not funny when I'm thinking way forward. Yeah. Minute, minute men are really good. I really like them a lot. And, and Brian you know, came to the party this year talking about minute men, and um, I think everybody should check them out. And it, and they got kind of pigeonholed under um. They got pigeonholed under a punk label again, kind of like The Clash, but they were a kick-ass rock band, and they just got, because they were different and weird, and they had a male lead singer who wasn't melodic, they became a punk band, you know, but the sound, Chit D. Boone and his guitar playing is absolutely fucking amazing. I have to give it up for the, for the um, I have to give it up for Minutemen. Yeah, it, it was funny, um, I do 45s, and I have about 100 that I'm doing for um, the newer versions of 45s, and they're going to be at a festival um, I'm doing. But they asked, I asked Laura to do a few, and I write down on paper, and I don't know their names, and she comes down, don't do it, they're not dead yet. <laughs> you said this one? <laughs> Twice. Twice? Twice. Too Sid Vicious, there you go. Yeah, he's pretty important in punk rock, <laughs> punk rock history, for sure. Although, there again, very minimal impact on punk rock history. Sid Vicious was only there for a second. Right, right, right. The he gets a lot of credit for punk rock, you know, and, and he was only in the band for a tour, you know, or an album, really. It wasn't even, it's weird. It's weird how punk rock got disheveled. Yeah, it, 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 the mod rockers started it to a point, but it transpired real fast and real quick. It didn't last long. It, I, I believe it uh, was brought up in England. That's the kind of punk I call it. Uh, sure there's uh east coast west coast where did mc5 uh, come from who where did mc5 come from because they get a lot of the credit who remember mc5 yes 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 i i have no clue they get a ton of credit for it because they were earlier than everything else but they were kind of weird edgy heavy stuff you know right 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 um, right, right. It had to be had to be um different and weird but just maybe not what everybody else was doing what it comes down to yeah no excuse from tom Harmon, folks uh, reach out and tell tom Harmon you love him if you see if you hear him today Let's see what he says. He didn't say dude, anything. Should, dude, should I put my helmet on? Are we going to go for a ride? This is, listen, this is my brother's hat. He, he, <laughs> I he, know, I'm just teasing you. And, and I, needed, I needed to think straight today, okay? I was thinking very crooked today. No, I'm, I needed to think come straight. Come on, it's crooked Friday. The hat is, is on. I'm not going to cry this week, folks. I promise I won't oh, cry. Oh, bullshit. I cried last week. <laughs> You didn't watch it last week. I cried last week. Dude. I was only on like 10, 15 yeah, minutes. you said we were going to be on all of a sudden about the garden. Lord goes, Hey, Phil, uh, John's on. <laughs> I started talking about, like, thanking yeah, everybody true. and what we were doing. All the people that had supported us. And everybody says hi to us. I mean, I broke down. I had a little bit of emotional moment. <laughs> and I needed to. I needed to cry all week this week. I had to get that shit out of my system. Hey, do a shot or something. Or just... Uh, hey, Tom, no, no worries, Tom. Light Tom, incense. Tom, wait, wait. My name yeah. is Phil, not Tom. Ooh, D Milk, who's... Oh, oh, here's a good one for spelling. Spell this one. Are you ready? Yeah. Susie Sue. <laughs> and the Banshees. I spell that though. Is it Susie Sue and the Banshees? Yeah, that's where she comes from. I mean, it was it was definitely Susie. Is that Sue. what D Mill said? I have seen. No, D Mill said fishbone. Like her, uh, she S, -S O S O I X E E E uh, and the Banshees B A N S. Is that what he picked though, D Mill? I don't know. Elizabeth Barron put it down, but she wrote S I O U X S. -I -E. Yeah, yeah, something oh. like that. Come on, don't be. Can't you just put like? No, uh, I bet you. I bet Susie Sue lost gigs because people couldn't spell her no, name. No, it's not. I call her Susie and the Banshees. That's yeah, Susie and the Banshees. That was the band. Um, the D Mill said Fishbone. He's playing with Norwood from Fishbone, October twenty first. Okay, Fishbone. This Fishbone's is a good one. Yeah, Fishbone's a good one. Fishbone. Um, yeah, Fishbone. 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 Yeah, I like this a lot. I like this a lot. Mine's gonna be in steps. I'm gonna start mine too. Mine's gonna be in steps, so I have to let it dry a little bit between colors, and it's gonna be pretty obvious what I'm making. Usually is. Hey D, I see you. Um, what, what, were you? Are you in Vegas? I see uh, Mr. D Mill and uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, I don't know where you're jamming uh, or doing your thing. Uh, congrats, man. That's all. Wherever you're doing, you're I see. Busy, man. Uh, uh, I see you balling life. with some. Is that baller? Is is that basketball player that good? I see playing. I see something about that. Uh, can he hang in Chicago ball? Okay, it didn't. It didn't matter. But hope he's good. Much love, D. Okay, fishbone. 
Fishbone. There's a band I really like a lot. Um, right. No more those though. There, that was Fishbone. Okay, that's Fishbone, cool. just Fishbone, yeah. Um, they are. Okay, no one can see it till it's done. They got four. We'll give it a couple. Everybody, uh, do your thing. Um, have a uh, have a kale shake. Um, less I call the better. Really. Um, do your thing. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, um, you know, uh, play, you know, you can get high off by uh, playing in the garden without doing anything. You, yeah, you could do uh, you could do things without needing it, you know. But you know, I'm not. Don't knock. Don't don't tell and don't judge. Don't tell and don't judge. You know. I got a little funny story. Last week's event that I oh, went to. Oh, um, this is for uh, Norm Macdonald. Oh man. Yeah, Norm. It's humor. I'm not a comedian. All right, John, you're up. No, it's okay, Norm. Norm it up. Yeah. Um, he's he's pretty funny and obnoxious. Sometimes he's not funny, but he's pretty funny. He's an honest dude. Um, I went to a, a party on Sunday. Okay, you ever heard of Penny Lane in Springfield? It's a giant head shop in Central Illinois. It's been there for like what? 50 years. A place called Penny Lane. It's a head shop. I've been going there since I was like 13 years old, right? Okay. And um, never, ever have I ever gotten to smoke with the guys who work there. Okay, it's always been a water pipe, uh, tobacco use only. Uh, let's not smoke. Let's not talk about smoking. Let's not, you know, we can't talk about it. So for 50, for what well, I've known them for 35, 30 plus years, I've never been able to smoke with them. And so we go to their event on Saturday and the, the owners, the first two, the first two people I see when I walk in are the owners and they each hand me a joint. It was fucking awesome, dude. I smoked with a dude from the head shop finally after 50 fucking years of being a head shop and having to hide from the world and pretend it doesn't exist. I, mean, I smoked with Ed Reed. It, it, it's and amazing how, it, yeah, excuse me, John. It's amazing how it happens so fast, so quick, and we can do it. And um, I see my friends uh, making a business out of it. God bless you for being uh, way ahead of the game. John, I still got your mason jar. Um, is it 420? I bet you it is. Um, it is exactly 420. Let's smoke something. Is it? I don't have a clock. I had. A, I guess that. Okay. So I'm going to light this um, stuff. I got some. Come back to this. Um, this is to my friends who um, are at the Grateful Dead show in uh, Wrigley Field tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of our friends out there at the Dead show tonight. I should have some to go live with me. Um, Pre-shows um, over and over. Um. Well, free punk rock to time, folks. This is royalty free punk rock from the YouTube. Cheers, cheers, Phil. Oh, fuck, I got a lighter. Happy uh, Illinois. Voting day. That looks way worse than it is. I got the window open, so it's out the window, I'm drumming. <laughs> All right, punk rock dog. Scooby. Okay, so Susie Sue. You want no, to, Susie you want to, Sue and the Banshees. You yeah. want me to spell it for you as you go? You want to say Susie and the Banshees? No, we're going to pass on that one. I don't have to put everyone. Hey. hey. No, we can't do everyone. We got to come up with something in. Butthole surfers. So what we're doing here, folks, is we're, we're going through some punk rock bands and punk rock ideas that Phil can spell, and he's adding them to a record. How do you spell the Ramones? The, right. All right, Ram ones. Yeah. The Ram ones. Yeah. I'm gonna right. I'm gonna see if uh, maybe Tommy will talk to us after the show tonight and come on hang out with us. Which one did you want, John? Butthole surfers. Yeah, so Punk Rock Weekend for Phil. He's going up to Punk on Park or Punk. It's not called Punk on Park. It's called. It's it's, it's a couple weeks away. What are you talking about? All right, Scoob. Hey. Hey. Yeah, they let the dogs out next door. When they, he he tells me when they let the dogs out next door. Tom's not going to be on the show. It's okay, Tom. No pressure. No um, pressure. I don't need this pressure. Uh, 
Pressure drop. Pressure drop. Down oh, on. feel it. Oh, <laughs> feel it. Hey, John. Um, how'd you like Wilco, Athea, um, Backyard Tire Fire, and Cody, and Farm in the Field? It's a beautiful time. Beautiful to see a lot of people who are at Shoe Fest and Shoe Fest. I mean, I, and then uh, everything at the castle is a beautiful thing. Uh, thank you, Tim and his family. Thank you, John and Amy, for letting us use the space. And thank you, seeing friends. Thank you for Michelle. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of great times. Great. This is what we love doing. Uh, music is great. All right. Come up with a band. I got five. Next punk band. I can veto it though, but. You can veto it. Yeah, I can. How about Dead Milkman? Uh, see, somebody thought that, that, that the, the replacements were fun. I would have to say, oh, that's a tough one, because um, like the song Bastards of Young, definitely kind of a punk feel. But the band, the replacements, never felt that punk to me. They were more pop, I would say. They were like radio, but radio wasn't ready for them. That's my opinion. I mean, that shit, the replacements... Are there placements? And you can't replace them. Yeah, I saw um, a uh, documentary on their fan base. Yeah. A lot dead, of Wilco fans are replacing Dead Milk Men or Dead Milk Men? A or E? And more than one. At the end. Yeah, E N. E N. Dead Milk Men. Man, men. Mad men. I'm not sure I like this chicken now. I'm going to have to, you know, it's, it's funny. I, well, it's kind of yellow. It's about well, to it's just the shape right now, but I'm trying to get the, the waddle is, is kind of going the wrong direction. But it's more punk rock, actually. It's a little more punk rock looking than normal chicken. But it's for a bluegrass festival for Year of the Chicken they're having next year. Just, they're having Year of the Chicken down in Missouri. And it's going to be um, a whole bunch of chicken-based bands like Cluster Pluck and Chicken Wire Empire. and <laughs> right. Chickens are popular in bluegrass music. Chickens are just popular. I mean, that's kind of given, you know. All right. That looks different. All right. Good, good, good I've had more punk albums. I don't have very yeah. many. Minutemen. Dead Milkmen. No hey, more. Mike Lynch is checking in from Canada. Hey, Mike. Cowboy in the bathtub. I saw your recent photo where you're actually in a bathtub full of bubbles. That was pretty awesome, man. Um, chicken Lab out of Peoria. Chicken Lab. You see, there's a lot of chicken bands. How many chicken bands can we name? <laughs> chicken Wire Empire. Chicken Wire Empire, yeah. I think I'm going to have a cold beer. It's 426. Had a smoke, having a beer. What Mike, does 426 mean, cold beer? What does 427 um, mean? Drink it. I, think, I think Canada's still kind of on lockdown. I think Mike, it might still be on lockdown up there. Um, they really take it more seriously than we are. Canadians are much smarter than half of the Americans uh, we're learning. And um, although we try to keep it, um, yeah, I mean, I tell you what. Um, some people just aren't aren't paying attention. That's okay. I've seen more COVID stuff in the last two weeks than I saw all last year. I think. But I got tested and I'm I'm safe. But it freaked me out. I had to fuck goddamn this world. I saw sometimes. This is one of my favorite bands. I don't know if you consider this uh, punk though, but I kind of do. I cars. Yes. What do you think? Uh, again, man, that's it's on the it was edge. edgy. It was edgy. It wasn't like um. I did um, 45, uh, I did 50 of my favorite ones, and Rick Ocasek was on my 45. Shake it up. Think about it. Shake it up. to Rick Ocasek. Michael Jackson wasn't on it. No way. Shake it up, Best Friends Girl. Those are the first songs. They're pretty poppy, but 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 those dudes had weird haircuts. And he played a weird, and um, Orr played a weird guitar. Benjamin Orr played a weird guitar. Like, uh, he had like the first flying V and a couple things like that that were pretty weird. Um, it's hard to say what's punk because punk just means it influenced people to do something different. Well, because the original punk was okay, safety pins and ripped clothes, but no, that was just because they were poor. Just like grunge music, it wasn't flannels and sweaters; they were just cold, you know. And so, Talking Heads, Blondie, those are great early punk music. I think, yeah, I'd say. But then, you have, but then, if you're going to put Talking Heads into punk because they were definitely kind of punks. Then you have to put a bunch of other bands in there too because well, they were popular at the same time. Well, I'm older, and what influenced those bands are what I call punk is called like The Damned or yeah. Chelsea. I would say The or, Damned or um, Damned or a punk band. 
right, or, or Chelsea, or uh, Ministry um, is kind of industrial. But there, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Ministry. They're coming around in town, so, but. Um, right, Chris, Johnson, Chris Johnson says um, Iggy Pop, or Iggy and the Stooges. Nope. No? Nope. Okay. Um, Sorry, Chris. Peace. Damn, dude, you're mean. I am. Sweet, sweet guy, too. Uh, he's looking for a traffic report, though. Uh, the thing about a traffic report is... Um, <laughs> oh, wait, it's under R. Hold on, I know where it's at. The traffic out here in Decatur is pretty tedious. It's not too bad. We have... we have uh, Our rush hour lasts five minutes here in Decatur. Literally, it's about a five-minute rush hour. And it's only, like, the five minutes that everybody's trying to get to work who's five minutes late. And that's the right. only time that it ever really... Um, it's almost like a, a, a game of uh, puzzle. I yeah. got bands in my back. <laughs> I'm coming in from the I-55 and the I-01 and the 744 and the 319 and the 420. We're seeing a lot of people on their cars. And there's somebody getting pulled over by eight SWAT vehicles and eight state troopers. And it's one poor African-American fellow on the run. I tell you what, that actually happened yesterday, folks. Uh, did you hear about that in the news at all there where you were at? They had this poor guy. He got in a domestic dispute with his wife, right? So he takes off with the baby in the car. And leads these cops on a two-hour chase that only takes about 10 minutes to drive. But for somehow they made it two hours long. And when they pulled him over, they had SWAT vehicles. They had military personnel. They had five to seven state trooper vehicles to pull this one guy over. One guy. It was unfreaking believable And I don't know what he did. It, it sounds what did you like, do? I, well, I, I don't think we're after me. Like this guy they were looking for me. They, they, don't, they don't know where I live, dude. They got my license plate. Whatever, dude. Come get me if you're coming to get me. Oh, that's what I'm going to say. But it was overwhelming. This poor guy, and he was doing like a live Facebook video for two hours about um of the event, like showing the cops and showing himself while he was running away from the police. That happened just about 15 minutes for me yesterday. So the SWAT vehicles. I've never seen so many so many fucking... We're locking up. Pardon me. You're still, I'm still there, but I've never seen so many. Now we lost you, but you'll be back. You're back. I never seen so many police for one person before in my life. Well, I went to the but grocery store. Young black kid, you know, and I hate to say it that way, but that's who he was. And, and it, it, was, it was very strange, you know. But I don't know what he did, so I don't right. know. Judge. Um, okay, come up with another punk band and not like 75 million letters. Someone come up with one that is in my head. Remember old school punk, old school punk, English. Old California. school punk, early. Uh, Chris Johnson seen Iggy Pop do Mozart. I believe that. I've seen him do jumps off the stage with no shirt on. Wah! Iggy Pop, he's one of a, he's one of a kind for sure. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come up with one, and I'm gonna go with. Uh, come on, John, your turn. I'm Maroa, Chris. Yeah. What? Um, and yeah, and then again, it was in a rural area too. It wasn't like it was a major city. I mean, I can't believe how many SWAT vehicles and, and machine guns and automatic rifles are pointed at this guy when he got out of the car. Holy crap! I mean, he was on the run, but he doesn't deserve to be treated that way. Nobody does. That's excessive, as far as I'm concerned. Um, no, so uh, we need to, oh, the Kinks. What about the Kinks? Would you consider the Kinks a punk band? No. All right. The Kins. What about I can't, King, Kings with an X. See, d knows all these, like, underground Peoria punk bands, but we're looking for stuff. Yeah, that... no, go deeper. Oh, here's a great one. Here's a great one that you will probably won't veto. Bad Brains. Yeah, that'll work. Bad Brains is an incredible punk band. That's what he's looking for, D, that kind of fun. Um, yeah, we really, yeah. Uh, yep, 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 yep. I love the interview with HR when he said, we weren't even trying to play fast. We were just nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and you end up with that bad brain. <laughs> you know, coming at you. Oh, oh, that. What, what, what did Laura from Aurora say? Roy Ponce. Roy Ponce? Well, there again, royalty-free music that we don't have to pay for. Thank goodness. Um, yeah, Friday night, September seventh. Friday 7th. night. Um, is there uh, what, what's going on in Decatur on a Friday night, Johnny? Um, nothing. I'm gonna hang out with the wife tonight. We're just gonna have a few beers here at the house and sit on the back porch, I think, and enjoy the. Yeah, pretty it's much. Really all around. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're gonna just hang yeah. out back and. I think that's going to be just enough. Right? Honestly, I don't think that we need to do a whole lot more. That's going to be, I don't know. We just need to spend. I don't want to hang out at home. I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting burned out, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of burned out on travel and the running. Yeah. So I, mean, um, I think it's time to take a little break. And I've got one more event next weekend in October, the same weekend you're going to punk. You know, I, I mean, if 
if I if I had more money, yeah, we'd do a few more things. But sometimes the body says. We'd be in Chicago the today. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, oh, it's just tomorrow. I mean, the, you know, the it's tomorrow. They play a three o'clock pre-show. I mean, the, oh, pre dead company show. Yeah, just put it there. If, if it had the money, which no, I don't. Um, Here's the deal. You're gonna go see old shoe for the pre dead company show. You're gonna deal with all the dead company traffic. Right. You know. Where, where the you're, fuck you're do you park? Well, we're on foot. Right. All right. Yeah. Anyway. So d mills kind of insisting on the kinks now. He's got the kinks back up again. The kinks Wikipedia page he's loaded for me. No, that's not fitting into my uh, my collage. No, it won't work. Remember old school. Remember old school. Remember old school. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, um, California, New York, Chicago, definitely London. One letter band from Southern California. What? There's a one letter band from Southern California. X. Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't count, though. I already, I, I have a list of like fifty, and you're really, uh, actually, they're on the forty-fives. Uh, a lot of them, the newer ones, because these are rare. Uh, well, I, I think it would fit into the uh, festival I'm doing uh, on October second called uh, Panic in the Plaza. Um, they're over there in the orange. Should I ramp? No, I'm waiting for more. Um, no one's watching it. No one. No one's in the pumps. What? Email is totally blowing us up, dude. Email has all the suggestions. Dead Kennedys, Kings. Dead Kennedys. There we go. Ding, 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 ding. One of my favorites. I get to see. I got to see them three times with Jello. And part of these things, most of these bands, I got to see. And Dead Kennedys. I've seen the Clash. I never saw them with Jello, but I met Jello. I see. Yeah. Black flag. Black flag. Black flag. Black flag. Black Flag was a great band. Um, oh, Dick Kennedy's came from the wifey D cells. Well, they'll tell her. Thank you, D. No, um, that's, that's what John already said. No effects. Yeah, look, 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 funny thing, I, I don't like when bands, hey, like Jeff, Dead Kennedy's, uh, bands tour with uh, the name, and they, Dead Kennedy's were touring without Jello. And that's a crock of crap. It's like a sing. I, I, yeah, it's I'm like a, the misfits bad, without bad, the misfits bad, without bad, Glenn Danzig. All right, how do you spell Kennedy's, John? Here we go. I'm doing K E I'm N N two two N's, and then E D Y apostrophe S. Whoop! He fell off the bridge. Hold on. Is it, is it apostrophe S? Hold on. Hold on. He fell off the bridge. One of the Kennedys fell off the bridge. Is there two N's? There, uh, two N's, and then and but no apostrophe. E. E D Y S. All right. All right. Dead Kennedy's. You can just put the little symbol. DK. The DK, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got a button. Um, yeah. It's classic. Uh, the black D button with the uh, red DK. That's one of the, it's one of it's like a misfits uh, classic logo. When I yeah. researched it, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, uh, okay. Singley says the smile, Phil. Misfits has got one. The Clash, Bad Brains. Um, there's a bunch more that, yeah, that can, these are, yeah, that, they, well, I like that. Bloody mess and the scabs, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Green Day falls in that. Green category. Day's not happening with that. With that's not even close. I've seen Green Day. I like that. That's not even close. I'm old. Cheers, everybody. Happy Friday. I like doing this. Green Day's a band that plays in a punk style. They are a punk band, but they got so fancy. Jeff Singley says, where's my candy? In extremely large letters. Where's your candy? Yeah, it's upstairs. Actually, we're not get, eating candy more. We're eating trail mix. And that still goes. And, I, gave and smart, I gave him Smarties last weekend. I gave him some Smarties. Stiff Little Fingers, Stiff little fingers is a good band. Little Fingers, Stiff yeah, they little, are. All right, I'm going to do it real fast. All right, I'm right there with Buzzcocks, too. Yeah. Smith said Buzzcocks. Uh, Laura's trying to... Okay, hold on. John, explain Stiff Little Fingers. Do you know? Like about them or? Yeah. They have a great song. Um, they're just another jammer, man. They're another freaking jam that's just badass. That like suspect device. I don't think. Gang of Four, who put that? Gang of Four, that ain't a punk band. Hell yeah, it is. Hold on, wait a minute. 
Let me finish. I'm usually fast. Don't don't overkill. We gotta I'm gonna take a break. Don't do that. Stiff little fingers. Are you gonna wear that 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 choker necklace that you got there, Phil, on set on next weekend? Are you gonna punk? Are you gonna wear your punk necklace choker? No, I'm not. Yes, dog choker. Social distortion. Now I gotta give social distortion a little bit more credit than the replacements for punk rock, even though. I recently went back and watched an old just, uh, social distortion video, and those guys were kind of like mod because they actually all had eyeliner on and their hair combed. Um, interesting, you know. There's so many little aspects of punk rock where, where it took us, but there were, you know, social distortion is something that was definitely written on the back of a leather jacket. So I think if it was written on a leather jacket and you saw it written on a leather jacket by somebody, it's a punk band. All right. I mean, right? Um, you think about the punk leathers, you know, and, and they'd say subhumans. They'd see the dead candies, a big well, local. Of school. I mean, and then they would almost always say social distortion somewhere on. Right. It, it, if if you dwell deep like I do as an old uh, soul of music, the Who were a punk no, band. I, no, because they were mod rockers. They wore leather. They were uh, road scooters. They were different. And different was a punky, edgy thing. And Laura's disagreeing. but that, um, Back. I don't know about Gang of Four. Oh, Gang of Four is in. I'm sorry, I have to put that in. Because I seen them back in their heyday, and then uh, Laura took me to a show. And anyway, but I saw him back, and one of the guys, Ian Gill, I do believe is his name. He passed away. I do believe it's from Exit. I do believe that. Gang of Four. They Gang broke four. the car. Yeah, they did, they did that. Uh, so she tortured and broke the cars. Who's the band that you and Emily went to go see this past year that was punk? We talked about the front bottoms, but there was more newer. Um, I don't know. I took her to see Fishbone, but that was a few years ago. No, you were pleasantly surprised, and they were punk. Definitely. And it was, it was, that was the front bottoms. That was on Lollapalooza. The videos for Lollapalooza, the front bottoms. Um, but they were really good. The Soy City Stranglers. Yeah, Soy City Stranglers. I've seen them. I've seen the, the Rolling Sixes. Um, the other band that goes with, um, what's the band you were just talking about? The, the other band that goes with them is, um, fuck, who is it? <sighs> Man, the train of thought goes off the tracks way too easily these days. I know, I'm, I'm a third wheel, sorry. You're not, you're not, you're, uh, you're Laura from Aurora, you have your own theme. Third wheel? <laughs> Suspect device. Yeah, see, that's stiff little fingers. They are badass, man. Patty Smith on there? Not yet. But, but see, it, it's like um, different eras. But if you really look up uh, what is punk rock, it was a select thing from the late 60s that started them. But stuff uh. evolves, though. Don't get stuck in a, in a hole. <laughs> that, you know, hey there, folks, uh, that's the new theme of the show. Uh, Laura, Laura, Laura just, just the new theme of the show is don't get stuck in a hole, folks. It's pretty much the same as let it go. Is that a band? Don't get stuck in the hole. It's not my, my, my advice for everybody out there is just don't get hey, stuck no, in no, a no, hole. No, 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 no. Hey, need a cocktail before the next band. Suspect device. This is a very punk rock bird. Um, yeah, um. We got a sports segment coming up. We got albums coming up. Uh, we, this could be a long show. It's been a while. I'm good. Did you guys do 420? 420? We're in like 670 or something. Yeah, we did. Like, we did. Hey, Scoop. Did you get Chester barking? That's Scoop. That could be a mailman. Don't go there. I got a, I got a banner. Right Whose car is this? I'll be right back. Please at the door. Um, forty-two seconds. It's my wife's friend bringing over pictures. Um, here, let's get this then then while we're chicken pain. <laughs> Just, just, just. 
little fingers folks a little breaker um stiff little fingers yes i know i, I do believe it was in, it's in a band. um there's a lot of bands out there i'm waiting for people to uh come up with and a lot of them are right here i'm i'm, I'm waiting for some uh what what I mean it's like what's rock and roll I mean people um love guns and roses which my brother hey Paul did and people are I mean is that rock and roll? I don't think that's music actually <laughs> hey now you were defending them a few weeks ago great no, we can't, we can't, we can't go back on that guns and roses suck man Fuck guns and roses. I know <laughs> There again, non-influential. They were the end of metal. You know, and, then, and then people go, "What the hell are you listening to the Clash for?" What are you, what are you know? I mean, listen, the Guns N' Roses had a lot of um, energy, of course, behind their music, but they didn't influence anything. They came at the end of heavy metal. They came, and they were like one of the last bands that pretty much cut the chicken, the head off the chicken of heavy metal at the very end of it. I mean, there wasn't much after Guns N' Roses metal, was there? That's why you like bacon chickens, because you cut their heads off in the backyard. We're talking post uh, post Motley Crue, post Def Leppard, post you know really it was the, the and it was funny thing is Shan Hoon from Blind Melon who I consider Blind Melon to be one of the real transition bands between heavy metal and alternative music. Think about it for a second. Okay, they came out in the in the in the late eighties, probably early nineties. Hello. Metal was dying, but they still played with a metal feel, but they played pretty. So you have, and they weren't doing shitty metal ballads. They were doing good, heartfelt songs, but heavily, you know, Blind Melon was a pretty heavy band. Um, and after and after Blind Melon, so you got Guns N' Roses, Blind Melon, Nirvana, really. I mean, or like Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, those bands. But it was all after Blind Melon. It had opened the doors for a little something heavier. And Jane's Addiction. Now I could go on all day about these fucking bands and this music because it's it is my heart. Um, but Blind Melon was a big transition, but 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 you know that's what Axl Rose just cut the head off the chicken right at the end of heavy metal. He was an asshole. He, he got in fights at his own shows. He was a bad influence. He did he, he encouraged drug use. He encouraged the album encouraged you know uh, taking advantage of women. I mean there were so many things that he did at the end of metal. But I think that killed metal. I think that he was one of the deaths of metal. I, you know you can argue with me that all day if you want to. But. Sorry, that's my Guns N' Roses opinion tonight. Boy, I'm feeling opinionated tonight. Let's talk about music. We do. Should we do five records real quick and take a little break? Cheers, folks. There's the chicken and punk rock. Chicken with the whole waddle on it still. Yeah. Now, I'll start here because you kind of gave me this one already. A, I might have a double. It's a very, um, I buy two. It's a, it's a very, um, Pretty uneventful album cover, but you talked about the Carpenters early tonight. But the album cover is like a, is like an envelope. 
It opens up here. Well, what's in it? And you turn it all the way around. There's this beautiful glamour shot of Karen Carpenter or her fellow there. Um, but what a sad story that was. What's the brother and sister? Yeah, I, I love the Carpenters, but if you had the Cheech and Chong album, there'd be rolling papers in it. Yeah, so a cool album cover. That was the cool, the cool design of the album cover. Because when you're you're an album, when you're releasing an album and you decide you want to do something like that, I mean, it gets everybody gets a headache because that's not that's not just a simple album oh, yeah. production. That, that's that's something they had to do and put together and assemble, and uh, every one of them had to be put together. So Carpenters, just the Carpenters is the name of the album. <clears throat> Are the Carpenters a punk band? What? Are the Carpenters a punk band? No, but they're they're heavy in. Um, you you said a couple of bands that I would fall into my punk rock band um, category. Alice in Chains, yeah. Um, Stone Temple Pilots and Nirvana are three of my favorite. You consider that punk? <laughs> Alice in Chains, yes. Stone Temple Pilots, no. Oh, Alice in Chains can go on. I, I think so. Yeah, if you want okay, to. Okay, thank you. But no, well, we'll go no, on no, after no, my our segment. Honestly, think about the you person who's trying to on that. But think about the person you're trying to attract to this piece. Somebody who loves punk rock music might hate grunge. Because okay, grunge is its own little sub-diversity. And I say Alice in Chains was pre-grunge, post-metal. Alice in Chains is another transition band between metal and grunge and alternative. Wait a minute. Because okay. are, are they metal or are they are they punk rock? Alice I thought you were going to buy it. <laughs> oh, it's for sale? <laughs> Here, folks. And Alice, 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 Alice in Chains is... Off the hook. Okay. Nice theme. Once again, don't panic. Don't panic. Uh, um, Alice in Chains, <laughs> no Nirvana. What's your no first album? Right, Alice in Chains is on there. All right, um, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Oh. It's very simple. I, I've probably done it before. I just like to cover it. And it's very simple. Well, so for, I, for Punk Rock Night, we start with the Carpenters and Peter, Paul, and Mary on Punk Rock Night. <laughs> hey, John. Yeah. yeah it's Sparkle Red. <clears throat> Uncle Red. All right, Johnny, go. I, Mike Lynch, did they ruin heavy metal? I don't know. They were definitely the bookend at the end of heavy metal. You know, uh, the Guns N' Roses. And we're going back to the Guns N' Roses thing here because Mike Lynch says, you're saying Guns N' Roses ruined heavy metal. Wow. But, you know, you have to think about it because they were... Never a fan. Never. I don't know what they were. They. they I, I can't name it. Yeah. Listen, there was good energy there. There was energy there that, that they didn't come up with originally, I don't think. It was more of a, something that they, was, people were already doing. But, but really, after Guns N' Roses, there weren't too many good metal bands that happened. So maybe they were, we'll say they were the last good metal band. Does that say, is that better to say? They, maybe they didn't kill heavy metal, but they definitely... I'm going to quit the show if you quit talking about Guns N' Roses. Cut it out. I know, but I'm arguing with a guy in Canada right now who loves Guns N' Roses. So, And he's the guy who sings country ballads and music, music beautiful uh, handwritten numbers about trying to survive and all these things that, that inspired me through the COVID. He loves Guns N' Roses. Hey, what am I going to say, man? He, he has an appetite for destruction, Mike Lynch. Come on. Wait on the line. It's triumph time. Come on. Canadian <laughs> band or Rush. Lay it on Let's take away from Guns N' Roses. I don't like Guns N' Roses. My own personal, it's my own personal thing. There again, I don't know why. It's just, I, I prefer not to be my favorite band. Um, nobody's perfect. Hey, I got flaws too, but we'll, 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 so we won't go there. But um, I got flaws. We got flaws. We all got flaws. So my next record is this one, which I thought you might like, because it's the album art. Boobies. But it's Honky Tonk Piano. So I'm not sure exactly what she has to do with Honky Tonk Piano, otherwise she might be standing next to it, so we're serving a drink, in a rather risque outfit, if you ask me. Um, but I love it. all the songs on here, there's so many. For Me and My Gal, Girl of My Dreams, After the Rip, After the Ball, <laughs> Cool Days, <laughs> Sweethearts of Sigma Chi. <laughs> It's a really good album, man. It's honky tonk piano. Think about like a rolling, think about a rolling, you know, piano. Uh, honky tonk. Right. Piano. Feels so all right, let's, come on, we're gonna roll. Here's that mind it. It's just <laughs> fucking great. And according to Paris, you're somewhat linked, man. Uh, I think yeah. Guns N' Roses got more attention for their album cover, for sure. Anyway, no more Guns N' Roses. <laughs> <laughs> sure. that, that, one was, that, was, that was a good transition, really. I mean, I don't know. That was pretty cool. Uh, got my, I like this one. This was going to be the, this was gonna be the back wall record for the night. Because if you haven't noticed, there's always a record behind me. Every week it changes. 
Um, if, if I'm in the studio, there's always one record behind me tonight. I'll give you the clue. It's Kenny Rogers' greatest hits. Nobody so far has given me all 71 records that were in the background. Um, but there have been 71 different records in the background of the show. But this one I like. It was going to be a thing just for the image. Uh, Joan Baez, the first 10 years. Look at that picture. That's just great. Look it. Put it closer. I think she got a booger in her nose. <laughs> she does. Hey, I got a booger in my nose. I'm Joan Baez. This has got a whole book inside of it. It's like the song book so you can read along. Or is it just pictures? Oh, it's just pictures. Here's a bunch of pictures of me. Here's some more pictures. Oh, whoa. It's like Scooby's cousin. <laughs> John Baez has Scooby's cousin. And John Denver has Scooby too. And Scooby's been, a, and throughout history, Scooby's been um, a popular guy. Oh, I really like this image. This is a great image right here on the inside cover. Can you guess where this was taken at? Uh -huh. The big one and only Woodstock, folks. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It's all right. All right, but Joan Baez, first 10 years. That's a, some, can I get that? I love for punk rock guys. She had a beautiful voice. And would she be considered punk rock? Because, I mean, nobody yeah. else in the scene was singing we'll like talk about that when the records are done. We gotta, we're going to have to classify. All right, okay. One of my two favorite. I, I've probably done it before, but I love... Rainbow Dance. One of my top albums of all time. And they just rock. And they always play Zeppelin Encore. What a great band. They've been together for a long, long time. Seen them five, six times. And they hang around, they get along, married, whatever. Heart. Love heart. Run on, run on girls. Peace. What about, uh, what about uh, cover bands that made it to album? Like the Cow Sills. Remember the Cow Sills? They did all cover songs. but they made, And Joe Cocker was kind of a cover band that made it to albums, you know, because the way he did stuff. The Grateful Dead are a cover band. Led Zeppelin's a cover band. Argue with me. But um, this one is the Classics Four. Remember them? They were. They, they covered a lot of songs, but oh, yeah. they did Stormy. Stormy's on this album is so good. Stormy, and they did Spooky, and they did. But they did a bunch. They were a cover band kind of. They played other people's songs, and they recorded them on albums. As far as I know, maybe not. I don't know. So don't, don't take my word for it. But they, the girl from Ipanema's on here. I know they didn't write that one. The girl from Ipanema. It's a great song. Dun, 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 no, it's not. Dun, dun, I'm sitting there cranking the Who right here, and Pete Towns is just gonna rip a nut right here, dude. <laughs> A, a, a punk band from Hamilton called Forgotten Rebels. I haven't heard of them, Mike Lynch. We'll check them out. Forgotten, no, Forgotten Rebels. No. We forgot all about them. All right. This is for, um, whoa, whoa. for uh, Independence Day. Uh, was it yesterday? Spanish Bullfighter. I love the cover. I wish you could see it. It's so clear. You could. Yeah. Pretty cool. And was that like live sounds of Sunday in Spain or is it music? That sounds, that, one, that one's cool. Wow, I like that album already. I haven't even heard it, but I like it. Is there a bullfight on the album? Oh, yeah. And oh, do you have a, oh, a bullfight? I mean, if, John, if you could really see that, is. I want to listen to it. Yeah, I want to listen to it. That's popping. You just look at it and go. Look at it. I'm looking at it. Sorry. So, so our friend Mike Lynch is still at home. Hi, Mike. Um... You have to come on the show and do a song for us. Wants to. Okay. But, um, and we'll see. I'm putting that, I'm opening that door, Mike. If you want to come on the show, send me a message. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you the link. Uh, my last album tonight, the fifth album I'm bringing out, is called The Word by Rod McEwen. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, there's no album in it. So I'm guessing like this came from you. Because <laughs> there's no album in it. Yeah, because I get... I like I yeah, he's a mass producer. Thirteen poems from Cotton the Quiet. The Yellow Unicorn, a cat named Sloopy. These are the jams on this one. It's two spoken word albums. And what's really weird is I really wish I had the albums. Because they're spoken word. I think that'd be interesting to listen to them talk. I don't even know who Rod McEwen is, but I'm interested now and curious about who he is. And I don't have no records in there, man. Because mass produced. And this is the last one for me on... Uh... Uh, Baja Mariachi Band. These guys will kick my ass, your ass, and Ant's ass. And I love Mariachi Bands. I love this stuff. I mean, look at what's going on. You know, they don't even have to play. You know they're going to kick it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, shit. I like it. I like it a lot. 
You know, the sure. great outfits, the costumes, the sombreros, the authenticity of them. Where are they from? Like Southern L, like LA or something, I wonder. Or they're from East LA, I wonder. They've got to be from somewhere. Oh, hopefully they're, they're my neighbors, man, in Aurora. They're your neighbors. Well, folks, that's five albums right there, folks. We are proud to bring you five albums every week from our collection. Um, yeah, we're proud. Proud to be who we are and what we're doing. We're happy to see you here. We're happy to see you there. Uh, kind of happy to see everybody. It's just so good to be alive today. It's a nice theme. Don't do it. And if you do it, let it go. <laughs> and don't fall in a hole and don't panic. And they broke guitars. Dot, dot, dot. So now we'll get back to the punk rock conversation here. The conversation this week is punk rock music. We love punk rock music. We came from a, an origin of uh, some really crazy punk rock music. Now, what about like TSOL or, or the Voivods or... I mean, there's so many. If you want to get into old punk rock, um, the Circle Jerks, Circle Jerks, just one, just two words, Circle Jerks. Uh, better than Black Flag, if you ask me. Uh, um, well, Circle Jerks, I've seen them three or four times back in the uh, early 80s at the Double Door Subterranean Club COD in the Metro. They played with a few other bands I'm not going to give away that I saw that I think were my punk version of punk. And if I research from all my research, I think they were in Circle so Jerks. There, there's, a, there's a live Circle Jerks album from 1980. It's on it's on Facebook, and it's got <laughs> it's got a whole bunch of songs, and the whole set is 13 and a half minutes long. That's punk rock right there, man. Oh, here's another set from Tijuana, Mexico, 14 and a half minutes long. Can you imagine going to a concert and seeing a band and they only play for 14 and a half minutes? <laughs> Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Can't be it. Here we go. Your turn. That was one of my early punk bands for sure. Was the Circle, was Circle Jerks? Um, not knowing what it yeah, meant. I, mean, I couldn't. I, I couldn't. Yeah. I mean, it's like I. I think. Uh, would I put them in my uh, category of punk bands? Punk is a different. Uh, I like new wave, but there's a punk new wave. I like diversion. Like I love X. <laughs> what? I love Mike Lynch. She was trying to agree with me. I thought he was arguing with me, but he said that, punk, yeah, that Guns N' Roses probably is the was the end of heavy metal music. After all, What's that? Okay, no. okay. Um, that's tough. You know, the, uh, I would have to say, man, Subhumans, Sex Pistols, which you don't have on there yet. But then again, I'm, I'm a protester of Sex Pistols. Like, yeah, I mean. Uh... If you put the Ramones on there, do you put Sex Pistols on there? I mean, that's definitely going to be that's definitely the punk rock roots. Clash, Sex Pistols, Ramones, those three I bands. I didn't, I didn't put Sex Pistols. I didn't put Sex Sex Pistols on yet. I, 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 yeah, no. They took they took punk from the Talking Heads and Blondie, I think, and twisted it, and made it harder and, mean, and meaner. Sex, I don't know. Sex Pistols suck, man. You know, uh, Patty Smith, who I've seen in my top five con concerts of all time. I seen with the Mekons, Patty Smith, and Richard Thompson. If you don't, if Johnny Rotten, if you're out there watching, I think your fucking band sucks, Johnny Rotten. Come on here and argue. Uh, with me. Public Image. Public Image was better than Sex Pistols, but you know what? I'm putting Patty Smith on it. for me because she is one of the originators. Uh, I saw her at Wells Park back in the '80s. We gotta get her. Can I tell my punk story? Fuck no. Fuck yeah. I probably told it before. Um, top five, top ten uh, shows here. Five bucks, go by myself. Five bucks, get in. Donation. You know, Wells Park. Uh, Patty Smith, Richard Thompson, the Mekons, Femme Kute. Unbelievable lineup. I j and yeah, a yeah. couple other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It just blew my. I'm by myself. I had just. This is. Yeah. Patty Smith goes back to. She, she opened up for Bob Dylan a few times back in the, in the mid 70s. Yeah. I mean, wore a white shirt. You poetry, know, poetry, poetry, poetry. She grew up in Chicago. It's a full moon on. I'm probably 
12 rows out, uh, whatever. It's general admission by me. And she goes, wow, my hometown is Chicago. I grew up here, you know. Oh, look at the full moon. Wow, it's a family thing. Look at all the kids in the strollers. She spits and goes, fuck, let's rock. In just two hours of pure punk rock. Patty Smith's going on. My wall of punk rock. Not Patty Smite, Patty Smith. Not the warrior. Patty Smith. That's my story. Top five. Can't beat it. I would like to see Dream Project for sure. The song that I'm hearing has got a big hook on it. I don't know. Can't give it away or we're going to get kicked off. I can totally hear it. You can hear it? Fuck yeah, I can hear it. Well, we got like. Yeah. All right. They ain't saying nothing, so they're fine. She's XRT. Hello, Patty Smith. She's still alive, man. Huh? Like when she spit in the white, yeah, just, it's just fantastic. Yeah. I needed like 11 more bands, so. We just got 11 more hours to show, so. 11 hours? Okay, then I'm going to get this. Yeah. That's fine. Isn't the weather pretty uh, deceivingly warm? It was warm today. Me and my buddy were driving around. It was pretty warm. Yeah, back in... Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen the waitresses, uh, UB40, Peru, Ubu. I consider those underground. Do I consider it punk? So, underground is a good word. What about Wendy or Williams? Uh, I've seen Wendy Williams. Uh, I've seen Maddox. Stif uh, Plasmatics. I've seen them with the stiff little fingers. I've seen them in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. See, all those bands, I do believe. I was at the show that I um, hit the pins and the waitress. Um... Hey, got us a musical guest. Got us a musical guest, Phil. Okay. Mike Lynch is going to come on in a few minutes and do some stuff from Canada for us. Uh, somebody we discovered because of COVID, honestly, because I I, um, I was doing my show and then I was watching Cody's show on Friday nights. And then after Cody's show, Facebook would just randomly feed me um, extra stuff. Like, hey, here's something else to listen to. You know, here's something else to, to check out. And um, Mike Lynch was one of them. And I got really turned on by his jams. He, he wrote really good, heartfelt songs and he sang nice. And he came on our show and he was so nice to us. And he sent us T-shirts and... Um, yeah, they did some of his album because one of them did, and the other one's right here, Mike. The only thing, Mike, that, that, that I had to I have to say about the T-shirt is, down here in America, unfortunately, the colors red and white are being are being obtained by the Moron Crew, and so anything with red and white on it, I have to be careful wearing out because people think that you support. They just look blindly at you as a red and white hat or red and white shirt on, and they look blindly at you and they judge you. I absolutely love my shirt to the end of the earth, um, but damn it if it isn't red and white, you know. So I'm, I might actually dye it and make it blue or something like that, you know. We'll see. I do love it. I'm really proud to have discovered Mike Lynch. Or, or I, I didn't discover him, folks. No, let me take that back. You have uh, found his music online, so I can start checking it out. Um, yeah, so we'll, he'll come in, in a few minutes here and check out, hang out with us for a few, and, and see. So we'll, see. we'll get the, the report on Canada and what's going on up there. But yeah. We'll, Oh, you're going to play Orange Crush in the background, dude? Now we're getting pinched for sure. Now, okay, now, okay, here's a question. What? Is R.E.M. a punk band? No. But are they super... Underground. I mean, alternative see, now we're getting underground. critical. Underground, new wave, punk band. They're all... I like all three. Why were ones. they? Why are they not a punk band? Though? Why is R.E.M. not a punk band? Because they definitely had a following from underground people. I guess that goes back to the D. Boone and Minutemen situation, where they were a good... They were a band that might have got... Listen to by punk. We don't have Husker Du. What do you think? I think Husker Du is probably a band that um, should be on the list for sure. Yeah. Bob Mold and Husker Du. I don't like the music that they produce most of it. Oh, but, great. But, I can't put it on now. See? One negative vibe, it doesn't work. Bunch of bull. When Amy gets home, we're going to do a shot of whiskey. and She's on the way in a little bit. Whiskey? I don't like whiskey. Yeah, I don't. Listen, I'm we don't get vodka. Off. I got vodka. All right. But this week was a fucking whiskey week, excuse my language. So um, we're going to bring in Mike Lynch and do a little small interview. We'll take a little break from the punk rock. We'll come back to it. You can still suggest bands if you want to. I haven't been reading the 
the, the post lately, but he's he's ready to come in the room and say hi to us. So I'm gonna bring him in. We'll go from there. We haven't had a guest in a few weeks, actually. So <laughs> this is a great, great four, two, four. Four, two, four, four, two, four. four. Four two four. Four two four. Four two four. Oh, they're not punk. No way. Bottom of the barrel. No way, punk. Man. Yeah. It does it ministry. Go oh, listen, ministry. 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 I might. But not front two forty two. Okay. All right. I, I can't. Ministry. I can't. I can't do that. Mike's on, but he has no audio, so we're going to get it together here. And he's connected to audio now. Hey, man. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, man. hey can you hear me, man? Sound good. Can we can hear, hear you. you. Phil, turn your radio down. Hey, man. Hey, Phil. Phil, turn that goddamn radio down. That's, the opposite. That's the opposite of a John Hartford song. Turn your radio down. <laughs> hey, Mike. Yeah, welcome back, Mike. Welcome back to the zone, buddy. Good to see you. How are you guys? Mm. I am fantastic. Feel Cheers. Good. Yeah, thanks Feel for the good. shirt. Um, oh, pardon me. Cheers. 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 Looking at real good Canadian Bud Light. Up here in Canada, we drink Bud Light. That's imports. That's great. I, I think we had that conversation before. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> we got actually. There's there's this great beer company. You know, in New Brunswick, it's a province in Canada, out east. And uh, they got this great beer called Moosehead. Oh, yeah. We get Moosehead down here yeah, sometimes. Okay, yeah. Funny, funny, funny. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It is a good beer. No, Moosehead's a good I haven't drank it for a long time, but it is a really good beer. Yeah. Um, green bottle. Yum, yum. Yeah. <laughs> so what have you, you been doing, Mike? What's been going on up there? Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been working on an album, actually. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. I haven't really told anybody. I don't know if anybody cares, but I've been <laughs> working on an album. <laughs> And it's like, um, it's kind of like uh, live and best songs from the bathtub. Nice. A live stuff of the recordings you've been doing, kind of the way you've been playing them? Are you recording yeah, them? No. Yeah, I'm recording them on a, on a reel-to-reel. Oh, nice. Yeah, we won't tell too many people. This isn't the Oprah Winfrey show, unfortunately, but we, 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 we'll promote you for, for the end of days, man, for sure. <laughs> That's cool, Mike. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's fun. I, I, what I do is, I, um, I know, John, you probably recorded some music and that, but I just record it really directly to the reels here, and then, and then I take it over to another guy and I mix it. I mix it over there. So, I, but I do everything here, like the pedal steel, the my harmonica parts, all my vocals, and I'm recording the guitar and the vocal at the same time. Sure. And, and then tracking sound. with that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's it's got a good sound. I'm, I miss that tape. You know, I don't know. There is that sound, a tape sound. Yeah. You know. It's a difference between carving in stone and carving in polyester or something. It's so different when you go from analog to digital. I mean, it's great. You can do digital. You can do all the magic tricks with digital without trying. But there's still something about the art of the work that goes into it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You got it. You got a mosquito. You got a full mosquito. Yeah, we got Illinois mosquitoes down here. I'm sure you got mosquitoes up there, too. They're everywhere. They yeah, don't because, oh, it, we, don't, it, we don't have them up here in Canada. None at all. <laughs> I've heard good things about Canada. That's one of the best things I've heard Whoa. so far. You just cross the border, there's no mosquitoes. <laughs> I spent some time this summer just across the lake from you guys on Lake Superior. It was just beautiful up there, man. I love it. Oh, isn't it got It's a great country. Like we have some really beautiful scenery here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, I mean, of course you. Of course we all do. But man, there's some great. Uh, Seen Pine trees and moose. <laughs> Illinois is pretty much like um, corn, beans, and silos. Every now and then you see a hill. And if there's a hill, they call it a mountain. But it's really just a hill. <laughs> so they name the town Mount Zion or Mount Auburn or Mount, 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 Mount Pleasant. But it's just a hill. So, yeah, Mike, if you want to play a song for us, that'd be awesome, buddy. We appreciate you coming back on. Hi, Mike Lynch, folks, from up at the Great White North. Well, up, up here... Uh... John and, and Phil, there's uh, it's like you know, it's like you guys, you know, you when you're driving down there, uh, you maybe go to the Grand Canyon, how amazing the scenery is. Well, just north of uh, Lake Superior, there's some beautiful uh, scenery like I've never seen before. And of course, I spent a lot of time uh, traveling around in my van uh, all the way through Canada, and uh, I saw a lot of people hitchhiking. Yeah. But I never picked anybody up. <laughs> I just kept driving. There's a hitchhiker summon. 
with his dog in a backpack outside the Robin Stones White River Day. Maybe he'll get lucky, get picked up by some hippie, driving an old VW, saying I'm going your way. It's a long, long way down the Trans-Canada Highway. If you've never been there, gotta take the drive someday. And if I had it my way, I'd take that beauty ride again from Wawa's Goose in south to Pancake Bay. Now, there's a guy in Canada here, uh, Terry Fox. He was a hero here in Canada, uh, and, he, and, he, and he pledged to go all the way across Canada uh, running, you know. And uh, anyways, here it is. Here's the, the verse for Terry Fox. There's a whole bunch of tourists pulling off a TV just to catch a glimpse of the Terry Fox display. He ran 3,000 miles to find a cure for cancer on a marathon of hope until that fateful day. And it's a long, long way down the Trans-Canada Highway. If you've never been there, you got to take the drive someday. Oh, and if I had it my way, I'd take that beauty ride again. Kekabeka Falls, west of Winnipeg. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a... <laughs> There's a musician busking outside of Byron Jasper. He's trying to make enough money to catch a bus back to the bay. You know, he was playing in this band, got in a fight with the singer, and now he ain't got nothing, just a guitar in his bag. And it's a long, long way down the trans Canada Highway. If you've never been there, I'll take you drive someday. Oh, 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 oh. my way. Take that crazy ride again from the yellow head pass. All the kitty mats. It's a long, long way down the trans Canada Highway. If you've never been there, I'll take that drive someday. If I had it my way, I'd take that beauty ride again. From St. Catharines, Canada, right down to Illinois. <laughs> and it's a long, long way down the Trans-Canada Highway. Ah! I think everything's out of tune. <laughs> oh, it sounded great, man. Well, the internet's out of tune, so you can only get so much when you're going across the internet anyway, you know? We get a nice CB radio sound sometimes, you know, it's perfect. When, yeah. when, we were, when we were kids, there was the Terry Fox story was on HBO, and I remember being really young and seeing him and talking about that, and, and that's where I first learned about somebody doing something crazy for a good cause, you know, and, and the fact that he had one leg, right? When you, when you had one leg? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I'm not sure about that story. I think he, he started running and he had cancer. And at some point during the run, he had to take, they took part of his leg off. Wow. Yeah. See, I remember being a very inspiring story, though, as I, as, when, I grew, when I grew up, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. Do you think that's where they got the whole idea of Forrest Gump running across America from? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I oddly know. enough, I mean, it was kind of like, <laughs> I'm not trying to discount Terry Fox at all, because that's awesome. That's a big deal, you know, for yeah, forever. Yeah. But it just when they come to that part of the movie, that's what it always reminded me of. Was that's the only person I ever knew that took off and ran across the damn country, you know. Um, I'm sure more people do it, but um, have you ever run across the country, Mike? Um, actually, no. But you know what? I knew this. I know this guy that uh, he uh, he's a he's a really great musician around this area, and uh, he decided to walk across Canada. 
and he, and you know, he raised, raised money for good causes and different things. And, and, uh, yeah, he actually walked all the way across Canada. But the thing was the good part of the funny part of the story is that, uh, I was going on tour out east into the east coast, and I'm and I knew that Rod was out there walking in the middle of you know wherever, right? And I'm dri- and I was like, and I'm driving along, kind of getting past near Quebec, and there he was, this guy walking on the on the side of the road, and I couldn't believe it. There he was. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you pick <laughs> him up? And he had a cane, and he's just walking, you know. He already so said I- he doesn't pick up hitchhikers. No, don't pick up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I knew this guy, so it wasn't a strange. Oh, cool. No, that's very cool. Um, yeah. There are odd things that happen. I actually know a guy who had a job driving an RV behind a guy who was driving his lawn tractor across America. So he, <laughs> he drove his lawnmower across America, and my buddy's job was just to follow him at like eight miles an hour in an RV all the way across America. So he had oh, yeah. to sleep at night. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. That's funny. Oh, that's good. There's something that drives us as humans that makes us want to do something, you know. And some days you just got to get up and you got to just do it, you know. And, and that's what makes what most, most drove what most drove Terry Fox, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah, what, was it that, what was it that was really driving him? Uh, you know, he was. Well, I think partly. I mean, obviously, he was worried about dying, so he wanted to, sure. you know, figure out if they could if they couldn't do something. And, yeah. In, in doing his part, he actually invested money in the future of that research. I'm sure, you know, in one way or another. You know, I mean, yeah. that was the idea was raising money for that, you know, for good, for a good cause for helping people, you know, along the way, which we could all use from time to time. You know. Hey, yeah. John, I, I wrote this song. Uh, I wrote this song a long time ago, but it's always I always find it funny because it's all me. about just it, is it a, it's a, it's all about this uh, guy that just a traveling entertainer. Right. And he's singing cover songs at his bar gigs and he's just traveling around trying to get by. I love this song, Mike. Thank you. There's a marquee sign with my name in lights. Down the street, you can see the sign. It said, Entertainer tonight. And across the street at the liquor store, there's a picture of me on the bulletin board. It said, Entertainer tonight. I'll sing old Hank Merle, Johnny Cash. If you drink enough, you're gonna dance. Maybe later you'll get a chance with me. I got a record for saying, and if you don't mind, I could use a couch because I'm living the life. I'm the entertainer tonight. I'm not really in tune with my harmonica, so I didn't tune the guitar properly. So part of me and my Canadian uh, harmonica playing. I don't have a song on the radio, but if you give me a chance, I can put on a show. I'm the entertainer tonight. I'm just hoping for a couple hundred bucks. Hey, the band, gas, the old truck. I'm the entertainer here tonight. I'll sing old Hank Merle, Johnny Cash. If you drink enough, you're gonna dance. Maybe later you'll get a chance with me. I got a record for saying if you don't mind. I can use a couch because I'm living life. I'm the entertainer tonight. Well, there must have been a big sum about the show. The whole damn town forgot to go to see the entertainer that night. <laughs> I went down the street up in a little bar. There was a hundred women sitting in the dark and the sign said, bingo tonight. I'll sing old Hank Merle, Johnny Cash. If you're drinking up, you're gonna dance. Maybe later you'll get a chance with me. I got a record to say that you don't mind. I could use a couch to some bam, I'm alive. I'm the entertainer tonight. I'm the entertainer tonight. Yeah! I like that. No, I thought that was going to be, y'all thought we were going to play Getting By or Try to Get By, but that was definitely a, one I hadn't even heard before. That's cool, man. Right now, I like great songs, Mike. I appreciate it. Well, I'm trying to do a different show every time I get up there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. 
you know, we've had a lot of opportunities to play online this this year. Are you still doing anything on Fridays or anything? Or trying to? No, I, I've been. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, well, I've been just busy with other things, so it's been kind of tricky to do the Fridays. But uh, but I know Canada is like it's just messed up up here, guys. Like we are, we are up in a full. We're not in a lockdown, but uh, we can go to restaurants and we can do things. Are we, we still locked out? out? Yeah, no, we but we have to wear a mask and yeah, when you go into places and they just made us put our masks back on because we spent the summer not with them. You know, once the vaccines came out here, they kind of laxed on it, and then just in the last few weeks, really, there's been more mandates for masks everywhere and in, indoor and outdoor. Thank you. Well, 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 as as North as Americans or not North Americans, uh, the smart Americans, I I think we think can Canadians are smarter than us. They're smarter than us. Why did they lock down? Definitely not as split as we are. They're not as split as we are, I would have to say. Yeah. Well, I, mean, yeah. We'll talk I mean, I'm not saying everything, but yeah. There is a political party. We're also in an election down here, up here, guys. Are you? Yeah. Well, no politics on the show. No politics, Mike. No, no problem. These, these are international no, politics. Hey, Bill, I wasn't getting into anything. That's these are right. international politics. I already talked about the red shirt, so, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? Brian Flick says hi, bro. Mike. Um, our good buddy Brian Flick checking in from Bloomington, Illinois. Hey, Brian, how are you there? He's How you doing out there? Where the hell's a speaker on this thing? Yeah, right. You hear you, you, hear, you sound great. Yeah, you sound great. Um, <laughs> but, it must be this cheers. Bud Light up, this Canadian Bud Light up here. This stuff's fantastic. Yeah, when we ship the Bud Light we ship to you guys is it's got less alcohol in it. That's why. Or a Molson or a Labatt. <clears throat> I saw I saw a guy walking out of the beer store today with Old Vienna. Old Vienna. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's an old one. Yeah, like yeah. a case of it. Yeah, he, he had a two four of it, not just a can of it. <laughs> Guy had a two four of this. I couldn't believe it. So are you are you just still adding bands now, Phil? Without people's suggestions about the no, I'm highlighting some stuff. I'm I'm doing my thing. All right, I need, I, now I need a couple bands. I'm just doing my thing. All right, I need a couple bands here. A couple punk bands. Yeah, see, that was the thing. We, we grew up with punk rock music and being crazy little kids running around with energy. Yeah. Laura wants Green Day, but I say Ellen should say, We were discuss this. No, no Ellen should say it's Green Day. Day. Is Green Day a punk band? Come on. No, early stuff. Mike, early I'm older. Punk no, I don't. Yeah, but no. They don't. Circus Tents. Put Ellen Chains. He's vetoing local bands. All right, Green Day's got to go. Man. Don't you know why? No, don't, don't. I don't want Green Day. <laughs> Do you put Black Flag yet? Did you scr- start writing Green Day, then scratch it out and write Black Flag next. Black year. Flag. I don't know if black I did flag, that. Yeah. I don't black have flag. Black Flag. I go for Black Flag. All right, no Black Flag. Black Flag. All right, yeah, they're going on. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's funny. Keep he's talking. He's got a big punk rock show coming up this week, so he's doing ready for the punk rock kids, and and he always he caters to wherever he goes, kind of, and um. We're, we're loving all kinds of music, you know, really comes down to it. Yeah, you guys are really staying on it with, uh, I'm, a, I'm in, I'm just kind of interested the way that you're still carrying on your show and, and you're going to different festivals and. Traveling has definitely changed that, you know, um, but like we were at Blue Ox Music Festival and there was this great uh, performer that was performing. So we got like an accidental musical guest because we just walked up to the stage and got a few of his, her tunes and, oh, yeah. um, we can't have guests when we do that because we're doing it through a telephone that way usually instead of through the, my computer. I can't, I don't know how to do all that on my phone. But um, yeah, it's been interesting. You know, we, we have been allowed to go back out and within reason, we've done some of our regular events this year, which have been really interesting and fun and, and good. I mean, they've been very well received. The, the people really need the music. It's a, it's a big deal. Um, yeah, for sure. It's the yin and yang of uh, both of us. Um, I couldn't do it without him. He might do it without me, but... Um... And uh, it's still a little scary. I mean, you're with well, thousands yeah, I mean, of people it, in front of the stage. Flies, you, you I start know, to walk towards why? the stage. I always like to walk up to the stage and see the music close and feel uh, the big sound. Don't look at but, anything yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. As you get closer, you're uh, more, more leery of the crowd, though. I mean, it's, it's they've they put a fear into us, you know, unfortunately. We, yeah. Oh, for we, sure, right? That's that, that separation thing that you're, even when this is over, we might still have a, a little bit of that going on eh? like in our psyche. In our, in mm-hmm. our lobotomies, <laughs> you know, it's, it's definitely like, changing us. It's definitely changing our um, who we are a little bit. Um, and it's yeah. just it's another change in life, just like you know, things that happen along the way, wars and big events, and it changes people, you know. 
this is a big event for dang sure, you know. What about Culture Club? No, not a punk band. Different and weird, sure, but Culture Club, I wouldn't call a punk band. <laughs> My life with the throw kill oh. cult. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of words. It, 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 it could be very well argued that that, that, that <laughs> Boy George is a fantastic <laughs> punk rocker. Oh, for sure. I mean, if you had colored hair before that, I mean, Flock of Seagulls, even Berlin, you've got like colored hair. So does that count? Yeah, see, that's Thompson industrial. Twins? Yeah, that's. If you put Thompson twins on there, yeah, so you might get beat up. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Romeo Void. <laughs> well, some of those bands, the kids that are going to be in that punk show have never heard of, Phil. Uh, Gang of Four, Romeo Void, those are really short-lived uh, things that were there, but if you're not really paying attention to this, you know. Okay, put it this way. Um, he might be... Um, this is old... Punk, fire hose. Early, yeah, flesh I, Tones. The Flesh fire Tones. Is basically the Minutemen. You can't say Fire Hose. That's basically the Minutemen. The Flesh Tones. I'm putting the Flesh... That's how back I go because. Let me ask Mike a question here. Um, when you were young, Mike, did you what kind of music were you listening to when you were coming out of age, like teenage twenties, something like that? Or are you only in your twenties now? I don't know for sure, but. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. But I just, I just liked it all. I was, I was like a sponge. I was taking it all in, you know. I was, you know. That's good. No, that's good. You didn't. You didn't pick a genre. You weren't a metalhead or a, or a. Like, or, so, like my best friend, like I was trying to start a band with him, and he was like, he was he was going to see in excess every every week. Like they were in excess were huge, eh, back in the yeah. day. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, and I was like, I don't know, and all that kind of music with the, uh, with the synthesizer stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't into it. like. Uh, Oh God! What was that one? Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode, yeah. New Order, just, those bands. I understand that music, so I just yeah. Kind of I mean, I, the, the baby, the baby has those dance music. That was the early pieces of dance music, I think. Like those yeah. bands, uh, you, you know, you went dancing, you heard Depeche Mode song or a New Order song or something like that. It made you feel like dancing because it had that it had that synth pop beat to it. You know, yeah, it yeah. got you moving. Um, hey yeah. Fiona, Brian Flick, Fiona says hi. John Griffin, so, hey Fiona, good to see you, sis. Um, sweetheart, we love you so much. Fiona Flick. Um, anyway, back to what we were talking about. I don't know what we we're talking about. How Punk many flicks are there? Well, there's Fiona and there's Jonas and there's and there's Brian and, and Sarah that I know. And there's some moms and dads, other people. Too. What here. Fiona, Apple, Sarah, Orange? What? How what was? But I found about? out about the flicks is I mail I mail the flicks a lot of things. They order a lot of art. They're a big supporter of the artwork. And I always mail. I them told flickers, you not to swear. You can't say fucks on the show. Well, just listen. I didn't say. I said flick. You just said it. The right <laughs> flick on an envelope. When, when the way I write, I write kind of fast, and you write the word flick on the envelope. If the L is too close to the I, well, for sure, that's what it says is fuck. Sorry, Please. Fiona. <laughs> We're talking about like a nine-year-old girl. Not even that's, just, that's on the show. She's not even nine. And, and you said the F nine word. I said the F word. I'm sorry, Fiona. You've heard it before. Your dad said it. Your brother says it. Anyway. Um, but if you write their name, flick, on an envelope, and you put the I and the L too close together... It immediately becomes that word, and you take it. To, I take it and I lay it on the counter at the post office. <laughs> They're like, "Who is Brian?" <laughs> yeah. Oh God. I said, "He's a punk rocker, dude. He's a punk rock. He's his punk rock name." Yeah. <laughs> punk rock, a short-lived genre of music that that made made a big difference in the world. It definitely changed our opinion about things, and it. It took away from the disco era. It, it melted the disco era. Yeah, so it did. Yeah, it happened like. Yeah, it in a couple mm. weeks, yeah. You know, hey, grunge killed heavy metal for sure, and 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 punk rock killed disco. It was part of it, you know. And punk rock was super popular in the late seventies. It was something that was it was happy. People were excited about. I mean, it might have been like it was bigger than it, than you think it'd be, and you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah, an interesting subject. Oh well. Um, yeah. Did you like the Cure? You probably like the Cure. The Cure. Now that you put the Cure, REM, U2, and NXS, they're kind of in a batch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, that's a, I that's mean, definitely a, its own genre. Eh? But the Cure is a great band. Yeah, it, it, it's I a different, different genre, genre for sure. Close. Not even, not um, even close to punk. But there again, there that's like the boy George, co the, the boy George card because he he wore. No, made, that's he, the, he no, no, punk has got to have an edge. You got you got to jump up the stage. The Cure are the seeds of emo and the dark culture. We had the kids that were black and the kids that dye their hair black and the kids that pierced themselves. The Cure were the beginning of that. 
Yeah. I mean, everybody wore black. Everybody was dark. Everybody was depressed. Guys put on lipstick. I mean, it was it was an interesting time. The Cure is a great band, though. When it comes down to it. Um, yeah. You know, how about the Smiths? Okay, so you got the Smiths there on that too. The Smiths should go on. But, there, yeah. I mean, but it was only punk because they made a patch and they got on some jackets. You know, I mean, they were a punk band. Morrissey was not a punk rocker, dude. Come on, we're getting too technical. I'm not going to answer the same empty spot. Morrissey was more of a spoiled brat, wasn't he? I think yes, so. He was. Like, yeah, he ten, just finished off a riot fest in Chicago. I don't I saw know a great about Morrissey, but I would guess that he grew up with money. But he finishes off Riot Fest, which is like the hugest punk rock festival in Chicago, and the ends yeah. with Morrissey. Which is just, <laughs> oh, man, talk about a letdown. I mean, it's like, you've been in the pit all day, and then you end up seeing Morrissey singing, I, you know, ah. you know, very his own thing, there again. But you know, Robert Smith did not like uh, Morrissey. They hated each other. Yeah, Dorothy. Johnny Marr was uh, the shit. Yeah. yeah, they're again a good band, you know, but weird, a weird approach. Yeah, weird approach. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, with El- I seen Alkaline Trio. What, what's uh, some of the uh, other? Uh, uh, let's go back. Let's go back even into that stuff. Did you put the Damned on there? What? The Damned. They got to go on there. Be- I haven't seen it, but there were something. I mean, they're part of that. Uh, the damned were early punk, I think. Yeah. What's that? Is that a banjo? Oh, we're getting a special treat tonight. I got. No, it's a drum no, shot. You're not, you're not getting a treat, but I just thought I'd show you my uh, new skills. I've been learning. You can't the show it if you you got to play it now, Mike. Hey, Joel Klein. Joel Klein's out there watching. We love our friend Joel Klein. Hey, Joel. Thanks for the tequila, tequila man. Hey, hey Joel. Uh, chime in if you're talking. Give me a pump. Can't really tell. It's not giving us an accurate count. We don't really care. Joel Klein, great man, great man. Joel Klein. Because it's punk rock night, it's uh, I can't leave the song too long. <laughs> I, need, I need to keep it within a minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> when did you pick up the banjo? Just this year? <laughs> or, or you sound great on it. Uh, I, well, I've had this banjo. I've in, I bought this in like my town I live in now. I bought this like 20 years ago, but I've never played it. So it's been sitting, but I've kept it. I even still have the receipt that shows, like I bought it, right? This is how often I've pulled it out of that case. But only the last year or two, I've been just getting into it. That sounds like a banjo joke. I kept the receipt. Yeah. (laughs) I'm using that. That's good, Mike. I bought a banjo. I kept the receipt. Now that's going. That's going to the bluegrass catalog right there. The only one I've ever heard was that the guy was uh, the unfortunate story about a banjo was the guy was loading all his equipment into the club. I probably told this on the show before, but he was loading all his equipment into the club and left his banjo in there for the last thing. He loaded his amp in there and his shoes and his board and everything else is mic. And he leaves the banjo out in the car. He locks it up and he comes back out to the car and the window's broken out. And some son of a bitch put another banjo in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Ben Wright? Yeah, I think Ben told me that. I'm sure Ben told me that one. Yeah, that's a banjo. Is a it's a cool ass instrument, man. It's loud. If you're playing. If you now, I don't know if you've ever played in a band with a banjo player, but as the guitar player, I always chose to be two instruments away from the banjo. <laughs> just, just for the extra. Like the bass in between. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all I got. I can't do the rest of it. Oh, no, that's really good, Mike. That's really wonderful. Sounds good, man. You got a good, you got a good picking style. You'll, you'll be fine, you know. Yeah, I, I find I'm a little bit, 
I I find I I really lack. I'm, I'm sure you've got banjo players out there watching, and I'm sure that they're thinking, God, that guy, he's just a step off still. He's just no, a with step the, no, off. no. The real thing is the banjo. Like, if, I, I, play, I feel like I'm just not quite getting it yet. Like I'm, I'm, no. I'm just, yeah. Here's the thing, man. If if our, if any of our banjo friend players are watching, they're just glad somebody else is playing a banjo too. I mean, that's oh, yeah. Our, I mean, okay. our friend Ben Wright. Uh, we talk about our friend Ben Wright. He's from the Hen House Prowlers, and they travel the world playing bluegrass. They go to Africa and, and Kazakhstan and all these places, really? and bring bluegrass to them as like ambassadors. They call it the bluegrass ambassadors. And it's pretty amazing the stories they get to tell about the places they played, and, and the how, stories we cannot tell. Well, of course that too, but 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 the idea that um they played in Nigeria once, and one of the most inspiring things I heard them say was they played in Nigeria once, and they had a whole bunch of bottled water on stage, and the crowd was hot and it was really hot, and they threw one bottle of water in the on the audience, and there was a riot. Oh my god! Yeah, and it was a riot. Yeah. They had to go off the to UN go um, to a locked room. It was like it was a they they didn't realize that that bought how valuable that bottle of water was in Nigeria. No kidding, man. Eh? No, I mean you think about that for just a second, folks. I mean you can turn on a faucet or go to the creek even and get some water, and there's a lot of people that can't. But yeah, we love our friend Ben Wright. Let's send it out to him for just a second. Ben, we love you. Wow. <laughs> Hey, you know, John, I like that. Uh, who's that? Do you know that fella real well that comes on and he plays the accordion? Yeah, Oliver Steck, dude. I know him that well, but, but oh, we've become yeah, friends throughout true. the years. I, every, I, seem to, I must have caught him a couple times on your show. It's like, man, he's, that guy he's, is so good. Like, he can really play. Eh? He, he, uh, he plays he's off the cuff. Him. He just he creates whatever he wants on the, on the spot. And yeah. I, seen, I seen him MC a whole festival where he was in between every band. And he entertained the whole time. It was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Oliver Stick is that kind of thing. Yeah. And he knows yeah. he knows any song too. I like. Oh yeah, he's got a radio station playing in his head that I want to tune into. Really. Yeah. Into it. Yeah. yeah. Up here we we got this guy named Washboard Hank. Nice. And he's he, I I mean I'm sure he's not the only guy that's got a bell on on the top of the helmet of his head. Nice. <laughs> but he's got a big washboard unit and. He's got quite a show. I think he used to play with Eagle Smith. Nice. That's, right. That's really so, cool. Yeah. I, washboard's one of my instruments that I've, I've played over the years. And I, I, you, can, yeah. you, know, you can always fit in. I get on stage with bluegrass bands and play it. Um, I'm kind of known for playing the washboard, just, just a little bit. Um, cool. I love that instrument. It's so fun and it's so, it's so versatile. And, <laughs> and Unless there's two washboards. And when there's two <laughs> washboards, you just have to step out of the circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if... Um, if one guy walks into the room with the washboard, it's like, yeah, all right, all right. The second guy walks in, it's like. That's when the banjo players just start walking away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's when the banjo players just, just get rocking it. Huh? <laughs> okay. Oh, 72 weeks. I can't believe it, Mike. You've been on the show a few times. We really appreciate it, man. It's just, it's really nice to meet you and know you, buddy. I am. Um, like I was telling before you came on, I really liked just accidentally discovering your music and your songs inspired me and your drive, of course, out the hey, window. Guys. Thanks, John. Hey, can I, uh, I'm going to ask you one thing. Could I come on to the show when I wanted to uh, promote my new album? Of course. Of course, of course. you can. Please. Um, odds are we'll still be doing it. Completely. Just all, I'll, I'm just going to talk about myself for two hours. No, I'm just kidding. Fine, dude. Do that right now. Okay. I don't care. We'll give you an hour. <laughs> we'll a new album coming out. Ain't not yet, but it's wait, coming, wait. man. It's a snooze fest. Trust me. It's in production right now, folks. Um, Mike Lynch yeah. and, 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 the, and the Angry Beavers is what they call them. I'm from Northern Canada or Southern Canada. <laughs> Angry Beavers. And Nowhere near. Canadian Nowhere near Nova Scotia, but on the way there, brother. On the way there. Um, Love no, you guys. Course. Of course, Mike. We really appreciate it. Thank you for being part of our show. You make it better, man. I tell you what, and, um, and keep up the good work. We'll pass the word and share the word about you. And um, any last, any final uh, uh, statement you want to make here this afternoon, let me let us know. And um, there again, thank you for being part of what we do for sure. Thank buddy. you, Mike. Um, oh, okay. Canada. Go Blackhawks. Go Blackhawks. Native land. Okay. Well. Have a good afternoon, guys. Hey, say hi to Patty for us, Mike, and you can take it's care of yourself. Afternoon, it's evening time. What are you looking at? Oh, he's in Canada. Right. Much love, Mike. Peace. You didn't give me a punk pin. It's one of the best things about the show is the stuff that happens by accident that we don't even expect. He can't get out now. He's figuring it out. He's trying to. <laughs> <laughs>
John, you got me locked in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're only audio. That's fine. Comment in anytime you want. <laughs> oh, I can't even find where, where you are now. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'll take you out, buddy. Good to see you, Michael. Talk to you real soon, buddy. Thank you. Bye, Michael. Yeah, that's cool, man. I didn't know that was going to happen. Okay, back to punk rock. Let's talk punk rock. Let's talk about this. No, little... no, 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 no. Um, my favorite punk band that I ever saw was probably either Dead Milkman or Violent Femmes. That's right. I should put... Okay. Now, is Violent Femmes a punk band? I don't know. But there again, this was a time of music that was... It was, it was called Alternative here. It was music that wasn't on played on the radio. Would I really call them? No. Time. I think was, more edge that meant something. The Ramones are... I mean, um, there's something that changed the way... I don't know. <clears throat> well, what, what... You know what I mean? There, there's no right and wrong answer. I mean... Uh, what changed you when you go wow that was something so that meant something what was it i was listening to def leppard and van halen 1984 probably okay um it wouldn't have been 1984 yet but that's when i first started really getting into music i was about 12 years old 11 years old and um but there was a video on mtv by the red hot chili peppers called true men don't kill coyotes and it was fucking weird, man. They jump out of the sand at the beginning. They got all these outfits on. They're screaming and hollering in your face and getting all funky and crazy. And so the, so dead men don't wear coyotes or dead men. Or, Who was this? The Red Hot Chili Peppers. All right. See, this is our age difference. You I had will. the Red Hot Chili course, Peppers. But... You, you, and I had Jim Morrison. <laughs> of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then after the Red Hot Chili Peppers came on, they played a band called the Sex Pistols, and they played Anarchy in the UK, and he said the word Antichrist, and it just blew my mind. And then I saw Psychotherapy by the Ramones, another video. It might have been even Night Flight, like before, before MTV. Um, I saw a video of Psychotherapy by the Ramones, and that sold me. That was like, yeah, that's the Ramones. I'm going for the Ramones. I'm going to follow them. I tried to follow Sex Pistols. There was only like a, a, a dead-end road of Sex Pistols. You can't get in. There's not enough music. Um, the Ramones had 25 albums out at the time, probably. And so I dug into them hardcore, going to listen to the Ramones all the time, and the Chili Peppers. The Chili Peppers were my favorite all the way through the 90s. We're talking the early 80s, all the way through the 90s. Chili Peppers were my band. I have everything but the tattoo on my, on my wrist. What do you mean your band? You, you have them in your pocket or something? No, but I, I felt like a connection to them. I felt like I was connected to them. Who, some, who some started the Chili Peppers? Anthony and Flea. They went, they went on a ski trip, no, and no. They, they gave themselves nicknames. And one of the nicknames was Flea, and the other was Tree. Anthony was Tree, and, and Flea was Flea. No. And it stuck with Flea, who's still Flea, and he'll be Flea forever. Oh, uh, Slovak started the Chili Peppers. You think you think the whole Hillel started it? Yeah. Um, being the guitar player, you're probably right, because he was definitely having the most drive in the band to play the guitar, the lead role, the lead part of the band. But he never stood up and wasn't like the, the face of the band. But when I first heard him, it was Hillel Slovak that started, and Jack Irons, that he was the drummer. At the time, so the Chili Peppers were a big deal to me. I mean, that was like, I thought I wanted to be fully, I wanted to hug Anthony, I wanted to be those guys when I was a kid. Um, now, is that punk rock? I don't know, but it was definitely weird and different. And the early albums are, I mean, uh, again, they, I mean, were a, they were a rip off band of the Meters and Funkadelic. And there's one other band, there's three bands the Red Hot Chili Peppers stole everything from. But the Funky Meters was one of the main bands that I never heard for until 20 years later. But didn't realize that, you know, and here's the funny thing about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They have fire on an album. Let me stand next to your fire. Let me fuck you name your fire. All that stuff. And I thought they wrote that song. So I didn't know who Jimmy Swore Hendrix was. two bucks from the kitty. I didn't know who Jimmy Hendrix was until after the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So they were, they were definitely a band that opened the door for me, you know. But then I discovered the Beastie Boys. And I thought I was going to be a break dancer and a hip hopper for a little while. But the Beastie Boys stuck, but the hip hop didn't stick. <laughs> And then I then, then then after that I just that's a different show. I'm gonna be oh, I'm, gonna, no, I'm, gonna be sick that week. I'm gonna be sick that show. Uh, I'll go back to Bunk uh, Rock because after the Beast Boys after the Beast Boys was like Black Flag, uh, TSOL. You got TSOL on there? That's early punk rock. That's early early thrash metal. TSOL. Who? TSOL. The Sons of Liberty. You ever heard TSOL? Everything. Oh no. Oh, you know what's on there that needs to be on there? I'll tell you right now. Agent Orange, or bad, or bad Religion. Okay, you got another early yeah, punk. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I need a few more spots because I'm going to finish up this project. I would do Agent Orange before Bad Religion, but Agent Orange was is important. And there, and there, and listen, it wasn't really that heavy, but it was it was punk rock. It was considered to be 
something your mom and your grandma didn't want you to listen to. And that's how you know what punk rock is. Your grandma didn't like it. Wow, you're holding really still. That's pretty cool. I'm going to put some dots on this chicken, folks. Let's get some background music going. Let's go back to that song that we're probably going to pitch for. <laughs> The Blue Minis. Oh, did you ever see the Blue Minis? No, I heard of them. I need uh, two, two more, two more bands. We need a kind of a ska band. We have Fishbone on there, but it wasn't ska. Pretty big reference to punk rock, like early ska stuff. Uh, uh, um, I'm going to the genre of music, so I need two short bands. No those in them. Did you put Violet Femmes? No, I did not. They're not. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Hold on. You're going to piss somebody off no matter what you put on there. There's going to be somebody that says, I don't like that one. Or, I don't well, like it's fucking one. punk rock. I'm going to piss fucking somebody off. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> hey, Bill. What the fuck? Nah, yeah, that was it. That was what punk rock was about. It was about trying to piss your parents off or trying to be different. Or, for I me, it was for me, it was this item right here, which is under my desk still to this day. My lifeblood, my skateboard. I, I, before I met my wife, this was my wife. Before I met my, 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 my beautiful wife, Amy, but this was my wife. And skateboarding videos had a ton of punk rock music in it. That's where I just started. Oh, Descendants, dude. Descendants, man. man. That's a big one, dude. SST Records, Descendants. Oh. Short letters, short letters. Four or five letter word. Come on. No FX. No FX. No. You're listening to No FX? No, no FX. N O F X. All capital. Yeah, I know. They they do belong because I'm not a fan of They, they have a big, a big um, turn in the in the. Music. I don't care if they're big. If Philip doesn't like them. After, they were post punk rock, but they kept on the early punk rock uh, mentality. My wife had this great sheet shirt that had like a. A guy, sixty-nine in a sheet, <laughs> and that was their T-shirt. <laughs> I mean, Psalm sixty-nine, 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 sixty-nine. Ministry. Now I would Now somebody said rancid, but I'll say no to rancid right away. Yeah, but no say, rancid. No but listen, you don't have enough letters yet left. But a band that should probably be on there is Operation Ivy. No. Yeah, Operation Ivy. It's one album called Operation Ivy. It ain't gonna work. I, 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 that I was the, the seeds to skinhead music, and that was the seeds to straight uh, lace. Let, uh, fin let uh, Philip finish. Come on. Ooh, it's dripping. Okay, but you will you at least agree that Operation Ivy is important in punk rock? No, I had never heard of the band. <sighs> You're making me upset now. 
Then go to the bathroom and take a poop. Maybe. Maybe. All right, come on. Uh... We are going up. Um, you have Operation Ivy was a big deal, man. One album. So, what you're talking about there is like um, ska, the punk rock, skunk music, skunk records. Um, all I know is that I don't know nothing. I mean, that's a great line. Uh, there again, you know, it doesn't have to fit, but that's an important band in, in punk rock history that belongs as part of what we do. All right. We're talking about punk rock, then that definitely has to be part of the conversation. Um, did you ever go to CBGB's? No. Yeah, me neither. I want. I wish I could. If I go back in time, I think that's where I would go. No, but I, I went to the dump door in the metro. I wouldn't go back to San Francisco. I'd go back to Central the East Man. Village. If I could go back, I'd go to East Village and see. Yeah, there's a lot of things. I saw punk rock, early hip hop. Um, I would hang out with um, the guy named um, Andy Warhol. I would hang out with a guy named Keith yeah. Haring. Hang out with the guy named John Michel Basquiat. If I had a chance to go back in time, that's what I would do. On all the shit that I, I would think you'd go back and change, I just want to go back and. And grow up in that period of time in New York. Well, I'd go back and change, you know, what I do. I would I go get a Basquiat clean and Keith Haring. I would be like, wear a condom. I would eat better, but I'd, I wouldn't drink alcohol. You know, Andy Warhol, I would just let go about his business. Well, you're, what? Um, is that what you is that what you would change? You think you would go back and not drink? When you, you've been talking about that. Oh, no, I mean, I, no. And what would I do? I don't know. I'd, uh... Go back and save Kennedy. Don't do that. That's been made a movie too many times. You what? what I'm well over the place tonight, man. Remember what I said about don't panic. Yeah, you don't know, panic. I, there's a that. I painted that. I painted that son of a bitch. I'm gonna light your ass on fire. I stole it from Too Fast. Well, yeah, I saw it around. I, I, I you. I gave it to Brian, and then I He's saw the main, main by the main stage, and I walked by it. I didn't pick it up. I go, hey, hey, I don't care. Did you see somebody got upset, and they said that, like, they, oh, saw, yeah. the sign, they saw it disappear? I, I, no, they saw it disappear, and they were upset that somebody stole it. And I was like, no, it got just taken by the owner. It's okay. People get upset, man. It's a funny thing. Yeah, so Laura likes the Operation Ivy, dude. She just says she likes it, so you're going to have to start listening to it now. Laura who? Laura Boyne. Where's she at? On the back porch, apparently dancing, she says... I'm about putting on a bit of a show for the neighbors. I'm sure she is. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Laura. Laura from Aurora. You're one of our favorite people. Uh, Bill's for sure. Uh, you're live. Band. I'm going to pick my own band, and then it's done until they outlet. So you're going to put on there a UB40? <laughs> no. Uh, I'm going to put on one of my uh, friends' bands from Chicago. Maybe, maybe someone might not know. We would call them. Oh. I used to listen to a band called Big Black out of Chicago. You ever heard of Big Black? It does ring a bell. Uh, he was one of the guys that ran off with uh, the guy from Ministry and made albums. So they called this band uh, out of Downers Grove, Illinois. They're not really a punk band, but they're edgy band, and they met a lot, and I, they had a lot of things. We're going to call it, and it's a true band, Emmett Stone. Well, what you'll do by doing that is you're going to make people look them up and then check them out. That's how punk rock gets around. You had, it was never like on the radio. It was a word of mouth thing. Hey. How do you hear about punk rock music? I mean, I heard about it. Hey. Hey. Kind of hey. hey. What's the show called? The Phil, um, Emmett Stone, out of Donner's Grove North. Seen him many a time. Um, one of the greatest guitarists, uh, Emmett Stone. Um, Does he like punk rock music? Or like, I mean... N uh, no, okay. Uh, okay, then I, we're off the charts and it's not a punk band. But it, it was inspirational, but it had an edge. So it's not a punk band. It's a rock band, edgy band. It was Hawkwind, 
Winter Hawk, Emerson Lake and Palmerish, Trippy, Stormwood Eddie Clearwater, uh, the Big Chief at uh, in, in uh, I on and on. I'm old. I can tell you on and on stories about great shows, and there was part of the vibe. We were up in the, on the roof, and there's a boat construction about 12 feet long. And uh, Eddie, the Clearwater Chief. Uh, then we went. To, yeah, just story. It just sounds like you're going to have to explain to people what it was. Okay, what was I trying to explain? I don't know. When somebody comes up to your booth on Saturday and they go, "What's this mean? What's this Amit Stone band?" And you're like, "Well, they're like a folk band, you know, but they're really cool." You know what? Like, someone's gonna. Someone's gonna go. Hey. Wow, you put Emmett Stone on there. Well, it's going to be close. Uh, Emmett Stone was a big band. Uh, we went to the Mink Ranch in Lamont and Downers Grove and Lam yeah. Anybody, the Mink uh, Ranch is that like the State Farm? Well, can't say everything. Tonight's theme, folks, is don't do it and let it go and far out and feel like shoe fest. That's tonight's theme. Uh, punk rock and records, albums punk and records. rock and records. Um, what are we gonna? Mike Lynch from Canada. I mean, the whole idea is that we're here, and if you're still hanging out, we appreciate it. And um, if nobody sees it, nobody sees it. We don't want really to give a dang. I'm gonna put. A, I'm gonna give him a musical interlude, Phil. Um, I got a really, I got a really great video of Wavy Day. Here, here it is. Here it is. You wanna see it? Oh yeah, let's see it first. Nice. Oh, that came out great, dude. What about the stray cats? You know what, son of a... <laughs> it's just an old picture. <laughs> All right. That's the stray the cats would done. not count. Let's take about a five-minute break, and we'll come back before we're done. I'm going to play a song by our good friend, Wavy Dave. Five-minute break? Uh, like three minutes. <laughs> okay. Will we be done? He's so fresh. No, he played on our show a while back. I'm gonna play the song he played on our show. Again. All right, I thought he was live. All right, three minute break. I'm going to be are we live right now. At the special. That yeah, we're live, brother. Right? All right, I'll be right back. We read grapefruit from Greece. Well, I heard him repeat. It was tasty and sweet. So it was then he started to boast. Well, I tasted that grapefruit, but it was still sour. I guess ruby reds ain't much sweeter than most. And it's like Mama said, my son, use your head. Don't believe everything that you hear. Keep a skeptical mind, and I think you will find that people aren't always sincere well the girl in the skirt she sure likes to flirt with every man in the room and when it comes to my turn my heart still does burn Sometimes you may see me swoon Well, she calls me up drunk And she tells me she loves me But I think she's just having fun Cause when she gets sober The romance is over She can't remember One thing that she's done And it's like Mama said my son, use your head. Don't believe everything that you hear. Keep a skeptical mind, and someday you will find that people are always sincere. Well, the president lied on his bed and he cried man what i got it just ain't enough i want absolute power third worlds i'll devour people don't like it that's tough now my nation loves me 
Ask my friends, they'll agree. I'm honest, trustworthy too. So have faith in your leader and know he won't mislead you. After all, the only wants it's best for me and you. And it's like Mama said, my son, use your head. Don't believe everything that you hear. Keep a skeptical mind, and someday you will find that people aren't always sincere. Have a skeptical mind, and I think you will find that people aren't always sincere. This is a, a tune that we do with uh, some... Yeah, yo, yo, hold on a second, Scott Tipping. We will bring you everything on the show. Um, what a fun show, Phil. That's good. I love punk rock music, man. That's important. Um, you're still muted. Hold on. I don't know why I haven't muted you. I was just playing the music for Wavy Dave, but we're lucky to have friends like Wavy Dave. It was good to see him last weekend, his little line, and all the people that we got to see. We were so lucky. Let's talk about Shoe Fest for just a second, Phil. Because I feel like um, that was a pretty big deal. It was fun. Well, it, it, it happened, you know, it, it's been two years since we've been there, John, and it, 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 just like previous little shows, but Shoe Fest, well, okay, in particular, um, I didn't have enough time to say hello to everybody. It was more like seeing everybody go, hello, I'll talk to you in a minute, in a quick hug, you, you know, you could all, um, there's something about Shoe Fest, it's a great thing. Yeah, it's um, the, I, 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 the bottom line is I didn't have enough time to talk to everybody who I wanted to see and say hello. I, I had a great time, great music, great turnout, great everything. I don't know. Yeah. So that's cool. We had a special surprise guest tonight with our friend Mike Lynch from Canada. That's pretty important. I think that's cool. Is that all right with you? Um, we're going to punk rock mine, state of mine. I think we're probably going to go jam punk rock on the loud stereo after we do the show. I'm not sure what album yet. Maybe the Ramones and the Century. I think it's a great album. Yeah, um, there, there's so much music going out there. I mean, we don't have time. We could do the sports segment. Uh, pro football's on. I'm into fantasy football. Whatever. I'm gonna go guard and go sit in the yard, or you know, um, 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 the Grateful Dead's in town. Um, um, I'm in the Burbs from Aurora. Um, we got a big band at the venue uh, tonight and tomorrow. Uh, there's so much music. But, you know, I don't have that kind of money. I mean, I wish I could. There's so much music. I love music. It's part of why me and John, we love... Uh, we're in a band. I, I mean, I, that's why I say we're in a band where, you know, we do art. I mean, uh, it, it rotates. We're artists, uh, like musicians. And I, I miss all my friends. Uh <clears throat> Yeah, a great show with Wilco. Uh, great job. Yeah. Uh, the Althea uh, great Shoe great Fest. Uh, the, uh, you get to see uh, John. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, just enough for me, Phil. Just enough. That's what hey, we did. Where did you get that one from? Uh, your, your girlfriend, Laura, gave it to me. She wouldn't even take my money. So I owe you money next time I see you, okay? But yeah, that was really cool, Phil. Thanks for doing those. Those are really nice. Um, Wait a minute. You know, you know. After a while, after you do it, they look better. Is it fun to see your work again? Like after you've done it, and somebody shows it to you again? I think that's it's actually kind of important for somebody. Well, to yeah, I mean, I'm not being sarcastic on that one. I'm like, yeah, it does from a distance. Hold on. Yeah. But it's real quick. I mean, <clears throat> you no, know, I'm that's cool. like. Oh, never mind. You son of a bitch. I just knocked a bunch of stuff off the wall. <laughs> the, the chicken's looking at you going, you son of a... Chicken is for, the chicken's for a poster. He's going to be on a poster. That's why he has no background. Um, he's going to be used for a poster. Um, um, for a festival in Missouri, actually. You should come to with me. All right. Um, I went um, with my neighbors and picked off the peaches tree, uh, peaches yesterday, and went up there and you know, get the ladder. I mean, you got great peaches on the whole. Yeah, and then I went up there and I go, oh, behind our shed and she got stung by a wasp. But... Hi, Maria. <laughs> she usually watches, so. <laughs> we'll be out in the backyard. Um, That's where we're headed. Uh, mosquitoes. 
mosquitoes. I'm gonna go in the garage. Hi, Bill. Well, hello, Amy Griffin. Hello. A pleasure, surprise. Not very many shows where Amy makes an appearance, so that's pretty important, you guys. Um, here's there's my beautiful wife, Amy. We love her. Yes, bug spray, bug spray, bug spray, and it didn't work. Bug spray. That's only the way Ankles, I'm gonna hang out there. The they're they're wicked because it's fall season. Even though it might be hot out, they're, they they want to come in, man. They yeah, they, they want to be aggressive. People. They want to eat people. Uh, mosquitoes want to eat people. Yeah, they love people. The beautiful people. The beautiful people. Not punk rock. Marilyn Manson? No. No, that would be post metal, post punk, early death like i don't know what it is it's, 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 it came out before system of a down i got a whole musical tree in my head dude of what happened when <laughs> um it, it, but it, but it also came out like at a weird time because it was also out during like sublime was out and you had I mean, who was also popular sugar ray See, th th this stuff. is the whole thing sublime this is what gets me and i asked it? people and i've been but can you name four sublime songs of course Okay, okay. Two dozen songs. Well, of course, I can't wear many a time and twice as hated as I like. What's your, what's your favorite band? Uh, Sublime. Can you name oh. four songs? Uh, and do they know that most of the Sublime songs were actually cover songs? There again, circle back. Sublime was a cover band. You like Nickelback? What'd you say? No. You uh, said oh, you like Nickelback. Nickelback. Oh. <laughs> I'm done with this show. Good night, everybody. Happy Friday. Oh, shit. John likes Nickelback. Let's go out with some punk rock. For live here. Some sort of jerks, folks. Some pinches for sure, but let's just put this up here. something and remember what i said don't give up don't let go keep on going what i say earlier the thing that's song. don't get in a hole no you said you want to go in a hole and die and crawl up in a ball i said that's what you said. oh <laughs> that was don't panic is what i said okay because <laughs> you don't have to panic you're gonna fall apart anyway it's gonna all it crashes when it crashes you can't change that you ever see the video i posted <laughs> Hey, I'm going to go drink some more whiskey and sit on the back porch with some nice spray. Should drink. Phil, I love you. I'm going to end the feed. I love you too, John. Say goodnight to these homies on the, on the internet. Thanks for checking us good out. Good night, everybody. I love you, John. Um, we're going to have more. Stay there for just a second, Phil. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs>